Hello, I am Daniel Bloodworth. We are Easy Allies, and this is the Easy Allies podcast. This week, I'm joined by Michael Huber. Cody Rhodes better win this weekend. We need it. <laughs> oh. It's time. Our all new upgraded Robamiani. Welcome to the Cafe 80s, where it's always morning in America, even in the afternoon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Just seeing you smoothly moving is amazing. <laughs> yeah, now, now with frame rate. Now it's frame rate? Oh, yeah. Now he has a, yeah. He thing. has a frame rate. Yeah. <laughs> I have the frames. It's, it's frames per second instead of seconds per frame. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, in the control room, making it all happen, we have Isla Hink. Hello. We got Don back there getting everything ready. <laughs> What's that pause? I don't know. There's Don. Uh, and uh, we got Gabby watching over us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, friends, we're here to talk about what's new, what's news, and what we've been playing. Uh, this week, we're talking about uh, Eternal Strands, a new game uh, that looks to give uh, kind of a new take on that Shadow of the Colossus style gameplay, uh, as well as Windblown. Uh, Windback? Windblown oh. from the Dead Cells team. Windback? Uh, Windback, dude. <laughs> uh, Huber's played Open Roads. I've been checking out the uh, LlamaSoft uh, interactive documentary collection cool thing. Uh, I also got an early look at Monaco 2 to talk about that. Uh, plus, we've got the results from our Discord's latest top 10. Hell yeah. Uh, so without further delay, nice. let's get into it. Uh, Eternal Strands. Eternal Sunshine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can resist. Uh, this is IGN's uh, IGN first story this month, so they're rolling out stuff like throughout the month. Uh, the other day, they put up uh, the debut trailer, which will show. Uh, they also put out some boss battle gameplay of theirs that mm. we won't show, but we'll have it up to reference. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about this. It's interesting. We got a little bit of a, a tease for it last week. And as I said last week, this is from uh, first game from Yellow Brick Games, uh, which is headed up by folks who uh, worked on leading the Dragon Age series, as well as some people from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Love Syndicate. Yeah, you know what else I loved about Syndicate? Hmm. That score by Austin Winery. So good. And I was you looking, love those strings. I was looking at the website and I and I scrolled down. I was like, oh, there's Austin Winery. He's in on the stoop. Nice. They got him. <laughs> they brought him over. <laughs> <laughs> love Syndicate. So yeah, so this is an interesting uh, project because it's like there's some like very base like Shadow of the Colossus element to this. Or nine giant monsters that they call arcs wandering around. Mm -hmm. But then there's like a uh, lot more like magic going on. There's like environmental effects and physics things going on. There are regular enemies like we see in the in the first trailer that like they're like telekinesis throwing wolves around mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and they've got like these ice spells where they can build bridges and stuff with ice and all of that. Um, but then yeah, you, then you have the arcs and the arcs are wandering through what sound like bigger areas than the Colossi would go through. Because they're talking about there can be differences in how they interact and how the areas interact with them mm -hmm. in terms of where you go to fight them. So the one that they were showing uh, is uh, he's, he's, like a, he's like a blacksmith. Um, it's, let me see what is the name of it. It's like the Ark of the Forge or something like that. Ark of the Forge. Oh, that one, that boss? Yeah, Ark yeah. of the Forge, yep. And uh, and and he has a lot of flame attacks and stuff. But what they're saying is is you know his flame attacks also like light um, stuff on on fire around you. So it's not just avoiding the attacks themselves. It's like if there's a lot of vegetation in the area, then that vegetation will also catch on fire. Sweet. And like, then like were, Breath of the Wild, yeah, yeah, like it, Far Cry Two, exactly. Or Far Cry Two, yeah. Uh, but then you can kind of counter that with like an ice spell or whatever, and kind of like blow out the flames, or you can like freeze his feet together. They were saying that's cool. Um, but the the weather thing though was cool. They said too. Yes, because if yeah. you're fighting him when it's raining, then his fire effects are going to be diminished. If you fire him when there's a drought in an area, then they're going to be amplified. That's neat. Yeah. Similarly, if you go and attack him in a cave or in like a like a stony area or a building, there's going to be less things for him to catch on fire. That's fun. Yeah. That's a sweet mechanic. 
Yeah, so I think there's a lot there that it's going to be interesting to to mess around with. Um, what else here? Uh, 68 people on the team. Um, they say that they're uh, 25 meters high, it's, which is interesting because like when I see... Oh, the bosses. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying this, the, the studio was. I'm like, no, what no, the no. hell? Like an elevation above sea level? Like Blood getting into the minutia here. I was like, what? Like to me, like in, have in my mind, they, they don't feel as big as a Colossus does. Um, yeah, but, they seem kind of small. Yeah, they seem a little bit on the small yeah, side. Yeah, like mini boss Colossi. Yeah. Maybe they get bigger. In, in the, you know, Though there are small Colossi, <laughs> yeah, remember, there's a yeah, really yeah. tiny one. Maybe yeah. the final one is like massive. They also, um, two of the others that they, they, they showed just glimpses of, there's one that uh, they said like they were described as like a robotic summoner. It's got like a big broad hat and like a, like a staff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting that they say summoner. So that makes me wonder like what else does this guy do other than fire mm -hmm. attacks? Summon mobs. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's like a flying dragon. So they have that element in there too, like Shadow of the Colossus does. Classic. Yeah. Um, they also, something that we have not seen yet, which will probably be in a later one of these Dev Diary things, uh, they talk about um, immersing yourself in a vast and rich lore where you will build relationships with a diverse cast of characters. So that's yeah. like a whole thing we haven't even seen of this yet. Yeah, there was like no real discussion, no, nothing really shown that kind of went into the, the story stuff, right? Yeah. Not yet. It, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, just I mean, all been gameplay, yeah. Yeah, it's a cool first look. I mean, it is absolutely that, a first look. It looks like so many different things, you know? We can see Shadow of the Colossus and Dragon's Dogma and Fortnite, like, in there. <laughs> you know, everyone was like, oh, it looks kind of like Fortnite. Just I visually, mean, you know, the, the, like, yeah. the art style is very, like, cartoony and stuff. Um... Yeah, we need to see how just it all comes together. I mean, I like climbing big beasts. The gameplay video did make it look kind of annoying, like how much health this freak had, kept throwing you off, you had to like climb back on. Yeah, I mean, I think there's part of that is... Probably just showing the... By difference. design, because it is a big thing that like, you yeah. have to find the right time to tackle him and like maybe you try him and he's like, no, this isn't going to work, I got to come back later with, yeah. or fight him somewhere else. Yeah. The other thing too is I think that that... I think that probably is IGN's capture. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're literally like looking at like th their first attempts to do this, and you like yeah. you know how that is. It's For like sure. like your, your first time in a preview event trying to fight something, oh. and there's fire everywhere. It's like what do I do? Blood's going that route with the footage. Okay, <laughs> all right. Blaming the blaming the What does that mean? I just yeah, that's not what I mean. I'm just saying that like that's an element. Like Shots. it's a different. You're gonna get a different sense of like what it feels like from somebody's first time Six versus like cheek. really dialing in on the mechanics. Yeah, sassy bitch. <laughs> um. Yeah, I just need to see the world and the characters and the exploit. Like, there's so much about this that needs to be solid for me to get excited. Right. And a lot of that, it, like, you can have big giant beasts to climb and like that in and of itself is cool but it's all the things that connect that and and what is in between that like i want i i need that feeling of like facing down one of these nine beasts to feel high stakes to feel important and for all the other stuff to be fun in the lead up to that yeah so yeah just well, I think that's that's part of it too is like what you're saying about you know them feeling like difficult to take down and mm -hmm. like how do you balance the difficulty and, and the quote unquote the annoyance of it, et cetera? Yeah. Because they're saying, like, one of the things is, like, he can just grab you and, like, smash you into the ground, you know? And, like, that's something that I think is great because I feel like a lot of these games, they, they tend to miss that, you know, you just sort yeah. of get shaken off or whatever, totally. you know? Um, and I also like that the armor is a big part of it, too. It's like you can't start doing yeah. damage to him until you've, like, actually opened up a section of that armor. Can and then you can actually start damaging them. Kind of had a like a, a Mortals Phoenix Rising vibe to it. It seems yeah. like they're gonna lean into the puzzles, just showing like the ice bridge and stuff. I imagine there'll be a fair amount of puzzles like in between these environments. They show a teleport thing too, which I think helps with the getting shaken off. There's not like every time I've got to wait for the right spot to jump on and grab and. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, okay, I've, I've got knocked off, but now I have the teleport spell so I can zip back up to where I was. I think one thing that's throwing me off, too, is just kind of how 
like the the lead character and the boss look like derivative is too too harsh a word, but they just look mm -hmm. normal. They look they look like characters we've seen before, right. you know, and even the combat kind of looked so familiar. So yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to get excited at this early stage because a lot of this stuff looks familiar and looks like games we've played before. Yeah. Um, who is the, I can't remember the name, the the Darksiders artist. Sure. You know, that, that style, it kind mm -hmm. of looks yeah, sort of similar to that style or to yeah. a WoW style. I remember Damiani was saying, comparing it to like WoW and Fortnite, mm -hmm. kind of across there. Yeah. Yeah, but I wasn't being positive about right. it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I definitely feel like, you know, we need to see more of this game. Um, I understand, you know, I'm not trying to be like negative, but I'm just tired of seeing games visually that look like this, that use this art style that looks like a cross between WoW and Fortnite. Um, it just doesn't, it just looks kind of, you said a little generic, mm -hmm. a little uninspired. And I don't know if they're do they, like, I don't understand like our developers haven't like doing this cause it's like, in their resources, like it's the cheapest way to do it. In which case, you know, I have more sympathy for that because, you know, it is a smaller team spiraled, doing a big out of control. Idea. Yeah, but also there have been smaller teams that produced, you know, very visually striking games. Hollow Knight. <laughs> Just look yeah, at yeah. I know it's not 3D, but I mean, it is possible to make something that's very distinct looking. Um, and the other thing is like, are you just like shooting for something that, you know, is generally accepted by the audience you're going for because it like passes like the smell test or the, you know, the eye test Checking because it just looks like a game that fits in and like, oh, I'll at least try this out because it looks like everything else that like I trust and I'm used to playing. Totally. It doesn't yummy. look wrong. Basically. Like I like climbing. I like climbing big beasts and stabbing mm -hmm. them, you know, <laughs> like that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. So even at worst, like, I got my eye on this because, again, yeah, climbing beasts and but, taking them out is cool. Yeah. And, like, the whole thing with, uh, like, this, like the destructible environment, how, it, like, everything interacts with the environments, like, that is a good, like, recipe for having a unique experience. But just climbing up monsters, when everyone just says Shadow of the Colossus, we get it. Like, you mean, like, climbing up monsters. But, like, <laughs> you, like, couldn't be missing the point even like if you tried harder when you just like throw climbing on giant monsters, like, Oh, that's like shadow class. Like that's not it. It's not like just climbing up. It's like the, like the, the struggle, the feel like that, the, the visceral immersion of doing it. Like, it's just like the, the animation, the motions and yeah. j j just like the, the music all coming together. Like that's why it's considered a game. That's like, was a champion of being games as art at the time because it was trying to be something a little bit more. And it's hard to look at some, like, you know, these types, some of these other types of games and say, you're just, again, you're just trying to do the right things, say the right things, show the right things to get people interested. And again, I will say I sympathize because I understand you need to get people to play your game. But just getting people in the door, that's a good thing. Keeping them, you know, playing, that's a whole other thing, you know. So like you, you maybe it's better to not try and swing for like as many people coming in to you know, crash in the gate right away and like having like a slow burn a slow build where you kind of earn that credibility like and hey, they're doing something new unique and different it feels good and like trust maybe word of mouth yeah um yeah it's interesting because it's it's like all of the people associated with it mm -hmm. like like you know Austin Winter, you got yeah. your music covered. You yep. know, you got the Dragon Age guy, Mike Laidlaw. Totally. So you should have story covered. Uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So it should be some good gameplay chops there. Love Syndicate. Um, so like, yeah, I, I, it it's it'll be interesting to get some hands on. It'll be interesting yeah. to see what else I see. Because again, IGN is like essentially spreading like one preview out over the month. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so we're getting one little snippet at a time. Totally. So we'll hopefully get a better look at the the full picture. Totally. Uh, by the end of the month. And I was surprised because I didn't, I don't know how they usually space these out. Because sometimes I'll see that, like, oh, okay, that's what they're doing this month, but I don't always like follow them like beat by beat. Yeah. So I was surprised to see that, like, oh, the second one was today when they did like the first, like, you know, the initial trailer on Tuesday. Because yeah. I was thinking maybe they would do one per week. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what else there's going to be there. Yeah. Game looks fine. We need to see more. <laughs> yeah. All right, next up, uh, I've had this one on the back burner for a couple of weeks, but I finally got a chance to start going through LlamaSoft. Llama. The Jeff Minter story. 
if you're not familiar with this, uh, this is uh, the second in uh, the Gold Master series from Digital Eclipse. The first one was The Making of Karateka uh, with Jordan Mechner. Sick. Um, and uh, a guy that I, uh, I've known for like 20 years, Chris Kohler, he's over at Digital Eclipse now. He's kind of on the editorial side of putting these together. Uh, and what I would call almost consider like a new genre because it's like it's a mix of like a game collection and like an interactive documentary. Incredible. Uh, and just like all of this associated stuff. Keep these coming. That's put in there. Support oh no, these. that's the whole thing. They're is amazing. That, like, yeah, that's why it's called the Gold Master series is because yeah. this is just like okay, this is the second one. Yeah. Um, and so sick. And what's what's Dude, in, Atari Fifty hype. What's interesting with both of these, um, the, these first ones that they picked, are these are things that I've known nothing about. From you know, like so, it really is like an educational experience for me because so cool. Karateka, I had never even heard of, even though I was familiar with Jordan Mechner, Jeff Minter, I have, I've, Mechner I've, and I've, Minter. Yeah, I've, Seems I've, like a I've heard his name before. <laughs> I've obviously like seen like some of his games come up when he comes puts out new games here and there, but there's just nothing. It hasn't been something that I've like really dug into that much any of his his library. There's like none of those like and and in Britain he's like one of the big names. Like he's like a Will Wright, you know, like huge name. Um and so just digging in and and, and the other thing that's different about this, cause like Atari fifty was sort of like bridging that gap, right? Like it was almost like a traditional collection, but then starting to mm -hmm. have some of these elements. And it was about Atari. It was about a yeah. publisher. Karateka was about that game and everything that led to that game. So sick. This is interesting because it's like, it's about Jeff Minter. It's like, it's about him as a person and like all the stuff that he's made. And I'm like only a little ways in. Like I'm yeah. still in like 1983. Nice. <laughs> I put it like a couple of hours into this, yeah, you know? Wow. Um, Life story, the game. <laughs> yeah. And so like you get his story about like, seeing a computer in school and the first time and starting to program and like port code from like a calculator to the computer and then like you know getting you know one at home when they're like the first affordable pcs were there and just like you know going nuts over that and then like being so into programming that he quit university and just like his story right and like even like with his um like starting up the company like he had these like other business partners at first but like you know, it didn't seem like the percentages and stuff that they wanted, like, it didn't seem to make sense. So it was like, he said, all right, I'm not going to work with you guys. And just basically was doing it on his own with his mom, mm -hmm. taking care of, like, a lot of the business stuff. And they're talking about, like, having just, like, all of these boxes of games just, like, all over the house until it finally, like, after, like, a, a while, like, they just built on an extension to the house yeah. <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to be, just, like, a, like, an office there. Uh, but then you also like get a lot of these like little videos um, where uh, you see him today, like in modern day, and like he's got this uh, this house like in the countryside in Wales, um, where he's got like just some farm animals out in the yard. Some he's got llamas. He's, yeah, he's got he's got some llamas. He's got some sheep. He gets stressed out programming, so he goes out and feeds the sheep to relax. <laughs> so chill. And he's and, and then he's got like apparently like Wi-Fi all over the place, so he can like stream him feeding the sheep. That's hilarious. <laughs> and I it's love just that. And it's just like yeah, it's just his attitude. It's like he's not out here to make tons and tons of money. He just wants to make enough to keep making his games, whatever he wants to make. Um. And so the way that these these games work is uh, they essentially have a timeline uh, that you go through node to node for like different beats and bullet points and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then yeah, those games look fun as hell, dude. Yeah, uh, and then uh, and then for certain nodes on the timeline, they fill in as you interact with them. And so like if you click on a picture, then like it'll like fill in that bubble or whatever. But then certain nodes, they kind of like let you go down so that you can kind of get like associated, like a deeper dive into nice. something. Uh, and so there'll be like these little brief documentary things, which uh, Chris is actually able to work with uh, somebody else that's already working on like a, like a standard like video documentary and like pull from them and in their interviews and stuff like that. Um, and then there's like, Photographs of the different PCs that he worked on, like photographs from conventions where he was selling games, uh, pictures of the house and the family, 
uh, design documents. Oh, there's Chris right there. Um, where like you see like the drawings and like him sketching out like what a game was gonna be like, pages from different journals, uh, like posters and stuff and sell sheets and just like, and then like sometimes I'll have like little quotes from him about a different topic or whatever. And then yeah, just tons and tons of like fully playable games. It's like you get to a game and then like you can see like the actual so packaging fun. and rotate it around. It's so cool. And then click play and then they've got like a lot of like modern options and things like that. That's actually one of the things that's kind of impressive to me is that like taking a PC game, even a simple PC game, and like adapting it to feel like palatable on yeah. a modern controller, you know? It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause that's work that they had to do, you know, to make this collection work. Yeah. Um, and then um, there's one note on there that's just about tea. <laughs> and it's just a picture of like a teacup and a quote from Jeff that's like, this miraculous substance lubricates and stimulates the synapses and helps them to fire in a, man a manner conducive to the generation of practical and robust code. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> um, and a lot of this is like super easy to digest, which is a thing I love, like with like the quotes and stuff that come up. It's like, okay, here's a couple of sentences on this. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, yeah, you can get to an instruction booklet and the whole instruction booklet is scanned and you can dig into that as much as you want. But there's also just kind of like a bullet point there just like okay if here's exactly if you just want to get the context for what this the is basics, this yeah. does it and then like you can keep moving on or you can dig in deeper uh although i will say i have cracked up laughing a few times at some of the descriptions in these instruction manuals that he wrote back <laughs> in the day <laughs> it's just like it's this is pretty funny stuff it's funny his sense of humor is, is was pretty good um and then um let's see oh yeah and then sometimes like because the, they, they have them in, in like chapters. So I think there's like four chapters in this one. And so it's really nice is that like you'll go through and you'll you'll hit all of these different points and play a bunch of different games. And then there'll be like kind of like this like closing interview documentary where it's like if you've gone through everything, he's basically just recapping the stuff that you've seen and learned already. But because you've been through all of that, now to hear it from his perspective and from the horse's mouth it kind of like it kind of like seals the deal like, yeah. like everything is kind of brought together and put into context um presentation is just excellent yeah uh i'm still like i said i'm still in the early uh 80s but one of the things i really like about this collection is not just getting jeff's story but the fact that like so much of this early chapter one chapter two stuff is with these British PCs. And so, like, you've got the Sinclair ZX80 and the Commodore VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 and the Atari PCs. And it really, like, it's a really solid reminder that, like, so many times when people talk about retro games, they just look back, it's like, okay, here's the NES and the Atari 2600. And maybe they'll talk about the master system or yeah. something, right? I joke when I say that NES is really the birth of video games. I joke. I kid. But it does feel like it's still. And there's a, <laughs> but there's the thing. There's like a ton <laughs> I know. of different platforms that were like yeah. not only viable but thriving. For sure. You know, uh, in those those early years. Yeah. Um, it's like and, saying Doom is like the first FPS when there was like, you know, it's not. Yeah. It was. You know, it's and not. then uh, <laughs> I was just looking at some stuff with Don after the podcast last week, you know, about like, uh, like, uh, they're putting like these Japanese, like old Japanese PC games onto the Switch. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Love that. But it's like they're doing it in a way that I'm like, I don't think anyone's going to know what this is unless somebody <laughs> tells them. It was like EGG console. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, and like, I had to like go down a rabbit hole to even understand, just look, because I was going through just the Switch games that came out last week. Um, uh, another thing that's crazy, this is a whole, like, side of, uh, a chapter of gaming that I just missed, um, partly because I was too young, but also because I just was not into the PC game when this was common, is but all of the games that I played so far were originally published on cassette tapes. Crazy. Cassette tape games, man. What? And you could even, like, save money by, like, ordering a cassette tape that had two games, like, one on each side. Dude. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> again, looking at the packaging for this stuff, it's just wild. Like, I don't, like yeah. how does that work? How does a cassette tape play a video yeah, game? Yeah, what in the world? <laughs> like, 
Um, and then, um, yeah, so uh, I've played about 21 games so far, just in 1982 and 1983. How much? That's how quickly he was programming. I was things. negative five years old, <laughs> <laughs> and and he was also t- there's some like uh, some of these games were like when he was talking about like a longer game. He's like, oh yeah, that took me a whole week to write. <laughs> <laughs> some of the others he would like write in one night. Yeah. Um. But uh. What? Yeah. One of the first ones that you can play on there is a version of Centipede, uh, that is like all black and white. That he made from looking at screenshots. So a he, version is it the first version? No, no, no. Okay, like okay. He is a a, a a take, and I'll get more into this in a second. Yeah, yeah. But it's a take on the arcade Atari game. Cool, cool. But cool. he had only seen pictures of it, and then he programmed it based on the pictures without having ever even played of it. Played it. <laughs> wow. Um, black and white, no sound. Uh, then there's a game called uh, Deflex that there's several different versions of. And this is like a ball and paddles game. So basically, there's a ball bouncing around the screen. And, it, and like if, if it's just going in straight lines, it's going to bounce back and forth. But then you can place a paddle that's like a backslash, essentially. And when the ball hits the panel, then it will like angle off. And, yeah. But then the panel will also switch. So if it like hits here and then it goes, it hits back, then it will go up and then hits here and then it'll go left like that. And so basically, you just have to put the paddles down so that you direct the ball to the goal. Got it. Find a pattern that will get the ball to the goal. Yeah. Um, They're still making games like that. Uh, Bomber, uh, which this is the crazy story on this, was originally called Bomb Buenos Aires because it I'm was... I'm from Buenos Aires and I say, kill them all! Yes. Hell yeah. Be- because it was a satire against the British war in the Falkland Islands. Whoa. Yeah. And so then he got some angry letters, and they're like, okay, you just changed it to something yeah. generic. Yeah. Um, but it was based on another Atari game called Canyon Bomber. And the, basically the way it works is you've got a, a plane that flies over a city, and you drop bombs on the city. Um, and the, the skyscrapers are like basically lines. And so when a bomb hits the skyscraper, it gets lower. And so essentially you have to wipe out the city before your plane gets low enough to run into it. <laughs> um, uh, and then there was Defenda, which was a copy of Defender, which is straight up. But he was like, he said that was that was customary at the time. It's like, this is how you got noticed. It's like yeah. you would find a popular arcade game, just make your own version, and you would of make it. your own versions. And then when Atari gives you a, 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 a cease and desist letter, then you would change the name slightly. Big Atari <laughs> coming in. Um. Uh, then there is Rocks. Uh, I played Rocks three. So and this with is, an X. This yeah, uh, with an X. I was kidding. Okay. Uh, so you, it, this is kind of like Space Invaders. Basically, there are meteors that are falling, and then like you could shoot straight or like diagonally left or like diagonally right. And if enough meteors hits the ground, then it like puts a crater in it and causes an earthquake, and and that's when you lose. Um, there's a Super Deflex, uh, which, again, is just, like, another version of the earlier Deflex game. Only this one was hilarious because, again, going to, like, just the amount of copying stuff. I, I won, like, a level, and, I'm like, I hear this theme play, and I'm like, that's the Superman theme. You just put the Superman theme <laughs> in here. <laughs> it's your winning theme. It's funny. Um, Andy's Attack... Was an upgraded defender in the U.S. The publisher released it as aggressor. Aggressor. <laughs> uh, but Embracer's in this, evil cousin. And this one, uh, to kind of evo- again to avoid like the copyright like uh, comparison stuff, uh, he replaced people that were getting abducted with llamas. So the first time he actually put a llama nice. into a llama Origins. soft game before it was just a logo that he came up with. Um, abductor. Uh, you had little ships flying in. It was another Space Invaders type of thing. Uh, and they would, if, if you didn't shoot them in time, they would grab the humans and then they would start flying off with them. And so you'd, you have one last chance to, to rescue the human. Mm-hmm. And if they get all the way to the top of the screen, then just a skull falls off the screen. Sweet. Um, then Grid Runner. This is crazy. So Are you going it, through all the games? What? Every single one? Just the ones that I played. Just the ones okay. that, the, he has 21. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just and as I'm a not, heads and up. We're gonna, some of these we're going to skip over, but I'm, just, I'm talking about the, some of the, higher, the bigger points. But uh, Grid Runner, so this was, this was a funny story because he was inspired by the Blade Runner poster. Oh. Saw the poster in a movie theater, and then he was like, Blade Runner, Blade Runner, what about Grid Runner? 
and 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 that's all he had was a name. And then he went home and he made the font. And then he was like, and then from the font, I can do whatever. You know, then that that dictates the whole Blade game. Runner and fonts, Isla. <laughs> yeah. This is you. I know. I'm. Yeah. I'm interested. <laughs> uh, but that's yeah. That's again like another take on centipede. Only that it's a lot faster. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's got like this craziness, like stuff shooting at you from the bottom and from the left, and like all the stuff to avoid. Yeah. Uh, and that was one of the things that kind of stuck out to me about like this era of shooters because like now, like a lot of those style of games, kind of like Geometry Wars. I think they uh, feel like they take a lot off of like Ikaruga and all of that. Whereas like classic. there's a lot of like patterns of bullets and you're just kind of like going through these like ballets and stuff and like before that it was like no this stuff would just randomly fly at you it was like where did where did that come from i'm dead now <laughs> like, yeah. but it like the more you play it the more it's you start getting like the sixth sense of yeah, what the rhythm is it's like those. you can't identify it but you kind of get an idea it's like okay when that goes off then it's safe to go to the left you know, but then, you know, if I'm not careful, something's going to, you know, it's like there are rules, but it's just like getting your head wrapped around it when there's so much happening at the same time. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, there's some Commodore 64 versions once Commodore 64 came out um, of some of these games. Then, so there's a lot of these that are shooters and takes on shooters. There's a couple of them that are not, and they're some of my favorite things that I played so far. Headbangers Heaven. Mm-hmm. Came out 1983 for the ZX Spectrum. Guide Chico through a shower of falling hammers to a bag of money on the other side. Okay. So there's just hammers, just uh, just just like rain, just blue hammers falling from the sky. There's a bag of money over on the right. You're supposed to get the bag of money. Easy. Bring it to the left. Then go get another bag of money. Bring it to the left. Here's where it gets hilarious, though. Chico loves heavy metal. So you actually want to get hit in the head with the hammers. If you get hit, any other body part gets hit, you're, you're dead. You'd lose a life. But if your head gets hit, then it increases your pain meter. <laughs> and you get bonus points the higher strange. your pain meter gets. Yeah. But it maxes out at 10. Mm-hmm. And so when your pain meter gets maxed out, then you have to find a red hammer that's loaded with aspirin. What the hell? <laughs> the pain. And that'll reset your pain meter, and I think bank that score or whatever that you you built up. So that's that was hilarious. Um, then we've got Attack of the Mutant Camels, uh, and this is hilarious too because he played the Empire Strikes Back game, the early like Atari game. Get sued. And then he read a review that criticized it, saying that the the AT-ATs, the ATATs, look like mutant camels and jeff was like well i can make a, ba- a game about that <laughs> and so he, so he basically made a clone of the star wars game and made 90 foot <laughs> mutant camels That's funny. as the things that you shoot down and yeah. they're shooting bombs and stuff at you back is it more fun than empire strikes um, like are his knockoffs more fun than the real thing like, when you said Centipede was faster, that sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, it probably, yeah, I think it depends. And, like, even some of these, like, between versions, because, like, like, because you feel like, like, a lot of times a port, you know, like, nowadays, like, a port is, like, just barely different or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, some of these are, like, drastically different. Like, in one game, um, like, Laser Zone, like, you're controlling, like, two shifts, like, there's, a, like, a x-axis and y-axis and you're shooting from both at the same time and like the first version of that they're just like essentially like arrows that you're shooting but then like the the commodore 64 version they look more like satellite dishes Hmm. and the enemies look completely different as well um but then i've actually preferred the earlier version the first version so it's like they go back and forth with a lot of these um and then uh similarly like there was a like a grid runner 2 um and what was hilarious with this is the U.S. publisher, Hessware, was not interested in the game Attack of the Mutant Camels, but they, the lo- but they loved the name. Yeah. So they named a different game. They named Matrix, Grid Runner 2, Attack of the Mutant Camels. <laughs> Bizarre. So in I mean, the U.S., themselves. it's one game, and the U.K. is a completely different Sharknado game. Sharknado. And a, yeah. Snakes on a Plane. Um, Good names. The next name, completely British. 
<laughs> no way. If you did not get a description of this game and you grew up in the U.S., you have no idea what this game is. Hover bother. Hover bother. Hover bother. Hover bother. <laughs> so hover was the, like what they were calling like, a certain kind of lawnmower. <laughs> Like, because they said it was like hovering lawnmower or whatever. Because, yeah. of, and then bother is like it's like slang for bothered. I love this game, this concept. It's like, so you, so they they went to like a, a like a, a convention to sell like a PC convention to sell some games, and they like stayed in the countryside, and they got the idea for this. So it's like you're a suburban guy who goes out and borrows. His neighbor's lawnmower. <laughs> and then you have to mow your yard. That sounds fun. Before your neighbor catches you. That legit sounds fun. <laughs> and if you hit, but if you hit any flowers, then the gardener will get mad. And now you have two people chasing you around the yard. <laughs> and so if they, if they walk into you, if they catch you, then they just, they, ro- hmm. they walk off with the lawnmower. But here's the thing, Huber. You have two more neighbors. <laughs> So if one neighbor takes the lawnmower back, you just go to the next neighbor and take their lawnmower, and this and the cycle repeats. And but then you also have your dog in the yard, which normally is just minding its own business. But the longer you go, the more annoyed the dog gets. Hmm. And so then eventually, like after the dog's annoyance meter wears out, it comes over it and 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 stuns you, and then you can't move for a few seconds. <laughs> But you could hold the button to sick your dog on your neighbor and keep your neighbor off. That's your very back. rude. Jeez. Uh, yeah, and another one like the instruction manual and everything. It's just it's hilarious. Uh, and then the last one I'll talk about is uh, Metagalactic Llama's Battle at the Edge of Time. Way too long of a name. He hates it. He actually hates the name now. Way too long. Um, and then it's it's always been shortened apparently to Metal Llamas. Uh, but it actually it plays pretty cool because you are controlling a llama in this one and you spit lasers and you have to spit lasers, but you can't spit them directly. Oh, we saw the footage of that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That one looked They cool. ricochet and you're like sh- shooting spiders. Yeah. Um, so you're like trying to like defend. The, and Oh, and the thing with this too, the instruction manual then goes through and like connects all of the past games is like a timeline leading up to the to Metagalactic Llamas. Awesome. <laughs> it's like Attack of the Mutant Camels and all of that stuff is it's in there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's wild. So that's sweet. Only twenty one games that I played so far. Still in nineteen eighty three. Um long way to still go. Still haven't gotten to like some of the big big stuff like Tempest and all of that. Yeah. So um but it's been it's been a blast. It's been wild. Do I get more than F Zero ninety nine? Totally different thing. What you, you come out with these weird comparisons. I don't know. It's because uh, I haven't seen you this hype for a game since F Zero Ninety Nine. That's why. Yeah, this segment has been insane. Yeah, you are out of your mind. Like blood is game. just like I haven't seen you this happy in like <laughs> yeah. years, and yeah. the rest of us are all like, "That's cool, blood." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talking for t- thirty-five minutes. Yeah, I just it's just, uh, it's, but yeah, it's it, again like. I've never played any of these games. I've never even heard about most of these games, you know? And, Same. And, like, and it could be really easy to just, like, hop in and then bounce, you know? But, like, yeah. I try to at least, like, spend enough time to, like, at least, to like, I've beaten a level or two or something. Like, I yeah. just got a real feel. Because, like, some of these, like, you get to the third level and it's like, oh, now all of a sudden this level's got the llamas in it. Or mm-hmm. now this level's got, you know, the the flipper things from the ball yeah. game from way back, you know? And it's interesting to see... Those different ideas kind of like make their way through. Yeah, and then just having them explain it all and yeah, going and through the, the timeline too. I'm obsessed. Because if like I just played one game after release. another, I would be like, I don't know, you yeah. know. But it, like seeing how it all evolves and the ports and all of that. Totally. Yeah, yeah these collections are really good. Like yeah. I really love that they're doing them. Same. Hope I'm very very curious when it gets to something I actually know. Yeah. yeah. What that's gonna be like? Yeah, it's like this guy made Tempest. Like that's crazy. Um, and like, like if we got like the origins of Final Fantasy and like all of those early Square games before mm-hmm. Final Fantasy happened or something like that, That'd you know, nuts. yeah, it'd be, it'd be sick. Uh, but Huber, your turn. Uh, you played through Open Roads. Yeah, this one's brief. Uh, yeah, from Annapurna, Mother Daughter Road Trip. 
Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, first sell is that it's a very easy platinum trophy. All you platinum <laughs> hunters, you can get this platinum in like two two hours. Um, I love these actors, Carrie Russell, Caitlin Dever, two of my all time favorites. So, uh, and I love this style of game, just like a road trip. Kind of has like you know the family drama vibe choose some of your dialogue options mm -hmm. you know the look of it's really interesting too because it's got like a yeah, cartoon so, character look but then you've got like 3d environment yeah so you'll you'll anytime you have a conversation it'll be like that cartoon vibe but then you're free to walk around these 3d spaces yeah uh the environments are are pretty cool to walk around in you know you walk around in a house or a trailer park or like a motel room my biggest criticism of this game though blood is that like some Annapurna games, it's more of an idea than a game. Okay. This game just ends. Like, mm. this game is two hours long and oh, it just okay. ends and you're just like, what? Okay, fine, cool. There's just no real arc, you know? that You have, like, your, your main mission is to, like, figure out, you know, you, your, your grandma passes away and you, you find a... Uh, you find that she might have had a big secret in her life that you and your mom are not aware of, and you set out on a road trip to discover the secret. And it's like there's there's no real big narrative hook. There's no big emotional beats between you and your mom. It's just it, it hints at these larger themes and ideas, but it just never really gets there. Hmm. I mean, is it like Gone Home or like you have to really kind of look around for like, like the entire sub story with the dad and like the yeah. the brother or whatever, uh, and like JFK and all that stuff is mm -hmm. like only if you put the clues together yeah. would you even get that. Is that no. like in this? Nope. Hmm. Oh okay. Nope. <laughs> nope. There's like a few collectibles maybe you can find in the environment. Huber, I did see Some in a trailer. Is there a, is there a Tamagotchi thing in here you could collect? There's a one of the drawers? Uh, there is, but it's not. You know, it doesn't work. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how much you love, like, totally. in, you know, the actual one yeah. holding it in your hand. Totally. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's just okay. I mean, it'd be hard to recommend it, honestly. Like, if you're... I, I think... I think I play so many games because I really like... Games, obviously, but I also really like sixes and sevens and, and the whole spectrum. Yeah. One, because I'm just, like, a little more laid back and easier on games. And, like, when I don't like something, I'm never, like, mad about it. Like, I went through this game and I was like, eh, it's fine. It also helps put in perspective eights and nines and ten out of tens. You yeah. know? It's like, dude, Life is Strange is a freaking ten out of ten easily. Uh, so these like lesser games kind of help put everything in perspective on that scale for me, um, and this is just on the lower end. So you're if, really, if you're really obsessed with that genre and that type of game, it might be worth a look. But just know that it's going to be lower on on the spectrum of mm. you know quality there. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very I mean, it because I don't know why, but something about the look of it reminded me of like Dear Esther. Yeah. And I feel like that was a game, too, where it's yeah. like, for some people, that game really Dude. hit. And it was like a huge I love thing. Dear Esther. And for me, it was like, um, I don't know what to yeah. do with this. Mm. Like, it was just. It this was, is yeah. definitely not in the same breath as Dear Esther or okay. Gone Home well, or because um, like, Finch or Everyone's Gone to the Rapture. Any of those games. Like, this is mm -hmm. lower, lower tier for sure. Because, I mean, like, I feel like with games like this, like, the thing that makes Dear Esther really tick for me is is the notion that you know there's the surface level narrative and then there's like yeah am i syphilis you right know? like <laughs> yeah, yeah there's definitely that question uh, you know and like if 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 this game maybe just doesn't have that other layer yeah. you know it yeah it doesn't have the depth like the whole game when it was over i was like that whole game could have been a pitch for the real game you know hmm. by the time it was over i was like that's it like and i combed through these environments got the platinum trophy even Right. You know, found all the optional stuff, optional conversations. Yeah. Damiani, uh, some, some Never thoughts? really got there. Uh, I was going to say, like, looking over some of these screenshots, I like the dedication to the authenticity of the time period. I guess I'm guessing this is early 2000s. 
Yeah. Um, because the, was it map quest? What was the one you used map to quest. Before? print out directions? Yeah. Like, look at the screenshot. Was, was and there's a broken nod. image thing on there too, like yeah. on purpose. Is he, like, that's how it used to look. You just print exactly, it out. Yeah. Yeah. I was the like, that's kind of nice. Image, yeah. yeah, that's kind of cool. a nice touch. I, mm-hmm. I, I give him credit for that. But yeah, everything you're saying, Huber, it's like, man, maybe it puts things into perspective. You know? Yeah. I mean, I kind of felt similar with uh, what Harmony, the Fall of Reverie, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, it's like it's like I I enjoy like some of the vibes of that game, yeah, and some of the characters, but then it was just like, yeah, where the story ultimately yeah. went and the way the gameplay, like I liked the idea of the gameplay, but then it got really frustrating because yeah. it was just always like, rather than like feeling like I was making choices, it was just sort of like. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. You didn't make the right choice in time, and now you're stuck on this path that you don't want to be on. It's like, it's like yeah. okay, guys. <laughs> and also, I love these humans IRL in real life. They're amazing at what they do. But also, shout out to voice actors. Mm-hmm. Like, real oh, professional voice thing. actors. Th- this, yeah. like, stunt, not stunt casting, but, like, casting professional actors and actresses into these these games like doesn't always hmm. work and sometimes it just really felt like they were they were just reading their lines rather than like embodying them you know so yeah. it just made me appreciate and respect like all these voice actors out there who like you don't even know their names because they're like additional voices one additional exactly. voices two or like you know seventh supporting character and it's like you are all so good yeah that was that was the thing Huber because there's a guy um, in uh, Harmony that had a really great distinctive voice mm-hmm. uh, plays two different characters uh, which I didn't even realize at the time because the two characters were different enough that like oh but then when I was playing Final Fantasy 16, hmm. I heard this voice and I'm like, I think that's the guy from Harmony. <laughs> nice. And then I looked it up and then I was starting paying attention. And I was like, he wasn't just one named NPC. Like hmm. he was several awesome. in, in 16. Yeah. And again, it's like he just, like you're saying, he wasn't billed as like some big name or anything like that. He wasn't one of the, the main NPCs, but he, you know, he was some some folks that you know had had names on them. So, yeah. um, but it's just really interesting to like, like, oh yeah, because I usually don't do that. Like most of the time, I just like absorb myself in the world and don't really, you know, pay attention to like who's voicing who or whatever. Yeah. But I just had that moment to where like I heard him and I recognized the voice. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's funny too because when you're casting professional voice actors you know yeah you you're you're getting the studio rate for the day or whatever usually and with that comes you know a certain number of additional voices oftentimes but with mm. like this kind of you know you could call it stunt casting or whatever you want but like you know they're you're probably just getting them you know yeah so yeah, yeah they're, i mean they're, it's a job for a reason yeah and yeah they're incredible but it really just showed me the like difference of hmm. you know this is not the Americans. This is a, a video game, and it is entirely different. I know Caitlin Dever has done some some games in the past, and you know, did, was in like Uncharted Four. Yes. Um. But yeah. Like Just, I definitely, yeah. I I don't I don't think that like on screen actors can't be good at voice acting totally. or vice versa. Shout out to Lance Reddick, like, ten out of ten. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like yep. there are so many good examples mm-hmm. of it, but it's like. You really do like having done both. Like you really do have to like put your head in a different place because it's like your face is a tool and yeah. like it shows emotions that you don't need to put into your voice necessarily. If you have, you know, if you can employ your face, <laughs> you know, like if yeah. you're on TV or whatever. But yeah, if you're playing a cartoon fox or like an <laughs> owl bear or something, you know, you got to put it all in your voice. Mm-hmm. Even totally. though you know mocap's getting better and better and better, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's all. Yeah. Easy plat. <laughs> Easy platinum, y'all. That is on Congrats. everything, though, if you are interested, though. It's PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, so. Nice. Yeah. Uh, next, we got uh, our Discord's top 10, and then we yeah. also got some game recommendations. Um, so if you're not familiar, uh, every month uh, our Discord votes on a top 10. This month was regular Battle themes. Dragon Quest The music that plays during a battle, but not a boss battle. Not like a big finale battle. It's regular battle themes. Uh, So they have two rules on this. 
One was, um, uh, but basically what I just said, regular battles defined as any battle music not used in a boss battle. Okay. Uh, and then second was everyone that uh, nominated was limited to a maximum of three nominations, no. uh, which was painful for some people to like pick their top three before they even <laughs> submitted them to the rest to vote for. It's probably wise. Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. wise mm-hmm. to weed that out. Yeah. So we go up to 53 on this. <laughs> What's number 53? Start there. Just give us number 53. 53? Yeah. Uh, Ken's theme from Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Move that <laughs> all the way up. There. Got wow. nominated, but no votes. <laughs> That's a good song. <laughs> Probably because it's not necessarily like a battle theme. I, uh, I right. wouldn't yeah. associate that with yeah. a battle theme necessarily. Okay. Totally. Yep. Um, yeah, so I'll go through top 10 and then. Great. Um, we can uh, Dragon Quest 8, dude. See what you want. Where is it? Oh, you want to find a Dragon Quest Right 8? now. Yeah, let's see. Heavily invested. One of my all time. Uh, I hate when I have to search because then it's like, oh no, it bounces me around. Oh you know? no. Um, Watch it not be on the list. Oh no. So the only Dragon <gasps> Quest I <laughs> see oh, no. is a uh, battle theme. At 47, Dragon Warrior, three votes. Damn. That is not a DQ. Damn. No. Oh. No. Deny. Dude, that's rough. That ain't right. That is not. That's not. It's just incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> it's straight up being booted Whole up right list now. Whole list discredited. Boot it up right now on your Especially YouTube Especially that Dragon Quest 8 version. Exactly. The, the orchestral. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can't is, play that though, right? I'll get yeah, wow. probably not a good idea. <laughs> but... Like, right. That's what's hard about these, this list in particular. Yeah. Like, we can't play these. We can't just, like so, tr- try to look these up uh, when yeah. you get home. <laughs> that one hurts. That one hurts me. But patrons, you can still be. I probably know one that will definitely be on there somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah. Where is Final Fantasy Thirteen? Oh thirteen. Ooh, our Discord. <laughs> yeah, our, our community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no 13 on here. Whoa. It's not? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, like, put by, it's like the easiest it's to get in 12. your head. <laughs> song gets stuck in my head for weeks at a time. Oh, wait, no. Oh. It's, sorry. I, I, was, I was looking by XIII. So we do have a Final Fantasy 13. Uh, yep. Blinded by Light at 12th yep. place. 12th place. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Almost hit it. Almost hit it. Yeah, that's the difficulty when we have 50-something things. It's like yeah. your brain just is not processed trying to look at them. Uh, but All right, Blood, lay them lay down. Tied for 10. Uh, battle on from Sea of Stars. 15 votes. Recency bias. Recency bias. Yeah. Yeah. Recency it. bias. Yeah. It's, 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 it's good, it. but it's, it's, it, it's definitely a good example of like, like what they're having to work with because I love the boss battle theme. Yeah. And that, but that's not, it doesn't qualify. It doesn't okay. count. It's got to be a regular battle. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like that one more than uh, Dragon Quest 8? It would probably not put it above Dragon Quest 8. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I did want to go back and actually like prime my brain for that one, but I didn't get a chance to. Mm-hmm. Um, also at 10, uh, the battle theme from Final Fantasy 10. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Oh stuff. yeah, that one rules. Yep. Um, tied for eighth place. It's gonna be all Final Fantasy games. The Guardian theme from Breath of the Wild. Oh. You know, the like <laughs> yep. the oh, tension yeah. and all that when Love that comes that. up. Yeah. Love that. Good it's interesting one. that that qualifies because it's a specific battle with a specific it's, enemy type. It's, but it's not a boss battle. That's okay. the only real thing. I mean, it's a great song. There. I love that one. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Wait, or, or, heart attack piano, yeah, totally screaming. <laughs> heart attack piano. Would a would a stage in a beat 'em up count? Like I, would I mean, go straight on here, so I don't know. Would go sure. straight in Streets of Rage two count because you're battling to a theme that is not a boss? Because if that's the case, that's like my number one. Let's it's go. not there, but I don't know if it would count. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> Also at number eight, take over from Persona Five Royal. Damn it! Do you have Is that you'll never see that's, it coming? No, that's the Royal version of the battle music. Mm-hmm. It's different. Oh. Different. I've only played vanilla. Seven. Gotta love it. Man with the machine gun. Final Fantasy ah. Eight. 
Nice. So many Final Fantasies. Yep. I yep. Re- yeah, I love that. Correct. One. I mean, love correct. It's a like, good song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not it's a correct. fan of the game, but I like the song. It's great. It's time for... Wait, Damian, when's the last time you played through I tried replaying it. I tried replaying the... Like, within the, like when I did finish my one through six replay of the yeah. pixel remasters within yeah, yeah, yeah. like the last six months, I tried okay. jumping to eight and I was like, gave it like two hours. Like, no, I can't take this. I'm done. Damn. It's a slow start. I it's just, a slow start damn. from my memory. No, all the explanations and stuff. I was like, man, I never had to deal with this in this like these old Final Fantasy games. Get out of here. You're dumping way too much <laughs> shit on me this soon. I'm out. <laughs> like, what is this crap? I was I like, mean, I don't want to yeah, deal with this. Knows? What is this? I didn't, like, I didn't like the world. Tutorial. I didn't like the world either. I'm like, uh, this is like, I'm not digging this. I'm out. Dude, the gunblade alone was enough to carry me through gun 80 blade. hours. As I got a, a gunblade in 14. Yeah. It looks cooler. I oh play a whole God. job with a gunblade. Oh it's sick. Here we go. Damian, did I tell you that I have 155 hours in 14, <laughs> apparently? Oh, I thought you were say like your uh, Warframe hours. And I was like, no, oh, I got more. Than, I got I got more than that in Warframe. <laughs> <laughs> I probably put like ten hours into Fortnite this week, getting all the the core stuff on. Hype. Oh, yeah. let's play, dude. Let's Proud play. of you. Let's play. I need yeah. I need to revive twenty teammates or some shit for one of them. Oh, dude, I will jump like off of oh, a building. Oh, for Ang's glider. Keep for, yeah, 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 yeah. We can cheese that. Okay. Yeah, we'll cheese that, dude. <laughs> Tied for fifth. Devil Trigger from DMC5. Boom. Mm. Devil Trigger. <laughs> classic. 19 votes. Absolute classic. Uh, Virgil seems better, but. E- even more of a classic? Wild Pokemon Battle from Pokemon Red and Blue. Nice. There we go. Yeah. There you go. There that's right. a good that's one. That goes on the list. That's an all Part of Pokemon. Yes. Really, really good theme. Hell yeah. Uh, fourth. Uh, I, I don't know where they come up with some of these names. This is Random Battle Theme from Chrono Trigger. I think I know exactly where they came up with that name. <laughs> we need a theme for the random battles. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, What do we call it? But it's the way they they wrote it, it sounds like a proper name. So it was like, wait, what? It probably is. It probably is. I don't think it is. But I'll, I it probably know. is. It probably is. It's I'll have to check my theme. Chrono. Tri- keep going. Um... I love I love human beings like I'm googling that right now, boys. Well, because there's an official soundtrack for sale, so I'm just gonna go through the track listings. Keep going. Um, tied for second place, Encounter from Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. There is no track with random in the official soundtrack r- listing for Chrono Trigger. There are wow, a bunch of Discord. battle themes wow. though. Mm-hmm. Like there's Battle Two, Boss Battle One, Battle One. So, mm. but no random battle. Interesting, interesting. Someone also, in chat second is place. saying battle oh. one. Okay, battle one. Battle one. Uh, second place, last surprise. Persona That's five. a good one. You'll never see, is that you'll never see it coming? Yes, that is. Coming! Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a 10. And the then, same uh, game got two different ones on here. That's wild. Deserved slot, but also yeah, recency I don't see bias. Any, uh, maybe it's number one. I don't see any near automata on this top ten list, dude. So I'm, oh, okay. That is my that is my last guardian, Isla. Oh my gosh, near that automata. Pers- that near automata won best soundtrack over Persona Five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Here just glad go. that's all Here it we won. Go. Here we go. I refuse. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> they both have really good reasons. Oh, you can't have a wrong take, that, this Huber. This is Huber. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I advocate for getting rid of that category, because it's too uh, personal. It's too uh, subjective. All right. Deserve it, but also recency bias at the same time. Deserve it. Final Fantasy Remake. Seven. Oh, it's good. Rebirth? Let the battles Let begin. The battle, yeah. Final Fantasy yep. VII. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's, that's, my number one, that's pretty much correct. Yep. Even I like the, the remake. Bias. Like when I was also in remake or one of the newer renditions, because the there's there's another version of Final Fantasy of, VII. Yep. So. Okay, because yeah, they have the OG one, and then they have like a newer version of it. The remake version, dude, the best culmination. <laughs> ten out of ten. Yeah, and remember, did, it can't be a boss battle, so that's Did The Witcher fair. 3 make it, Blood Earth? <laughs> Silver for Monsters, 19th place. 10 votes. Persona 4 is on? The, oh, yeah, 13. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to see what else. Yeah, You're, like, fighting a level 1 wolf, and The Witcher is just <laughs> popping <laughs> off. Like, <laughs> seeing what's going to stick out here. Obviously, there's a lot more. 
Final Fantasy's in there, and Persona's in there, and Pokemon's in there. Cool. Sewer Bat from Arkham Asylum. Yo, where's the, uh, oh, because they're all boss, me- it's all boss music in FromSoft games, damn it. They don't have, like, regular it. battle music. No, not Yo, really. Yo, Damiani, number 27, dude. What's Civil, that? Civil, FTL. Yep. FTL's oh, yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Oh, yeah, you, it, I would, it's kind of weird, though, because I guess they only count the final ship as a boss, because, like, it feels like every battle is, mm-hmm. like, a boss fight, sort yeah, of. Every <laughs> encounter in that <laughs> is a boss. And yeah, like, f- like, fighting a ship. Yeah. Anything from Rogue Legacy 2, Bloodworth. Great music in the Rogue Legacy series. Yeah. Yo, Wild Arms 3 shit, yeah. But do they they don't really have battle music, right? It's just like you're in Stage the level. Stage music, yeah. yeah, I guess so, yeah. Oh, Xenogears, dude. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, Xenoblade yeah, Chronicles like, 2, it. Torna. Oh, yeah, where, where, okay, where are all the Xenoblade Chronicles on here? Every single one of those should be on there. Where, Torna is at 19th. Okay, no, where where is 1 and 3s? Where is one? Where's rules of nature? What the yeah, heck? Yeah, rules of nature. Is, I mean, <laughs> we already went over this like 15 years ago. That's the only Xenoblade. Metal Gear Revengeance is like just on a different plane of existence, so it's never eligible for any of these music categories or anything. People don't like anything. Avenged Sevenfold, Damiani. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts is also Wait. at 19. Valkyria Chronicles is also at 19. Wait, did you just say time to fight and... You will know our names are not on this not list there. anywhere. Okay. They're not there. We got Rocket nice. Nets Groove. Oh. All right. Just, from Yakuza just, Zero. This list nice. is credited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Disc- discredited love, from the jump with no Dragon Quest 8. I love when <laughs> these just turn into us screaming at our own page. <laughs> it's the best. Bravely Default's gone there. The Golden best. Sun is on there. Radiant Tactics Historia. There. Oh, okay. Wow. There's a poll. Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is on there and not Dragon Quest Eight. Excuse me. He <laughs> got blood. Excuse finally. Excuse <laughs> me, says Bloodworth. Patrons, <laughs> like not gonna Excuse knock the Mystic me? Quest soundtrack, but I mean <laughs> priorities here. <laughs> I'm pleased. Wild Arms got on there. Love it. Dicey Dungeons. Dungeons. Tactics so, is on there. Genshin so Impact has got on there like a couple times. Jeez. Skyrim is in there. Fuzuda! Tales of Symphonia, Advance Wars. Fuzuda! Dragon Age Origins. Battle Hunter. I don't even know what that is. Battle Hunter. Battle Hunter. Nice. Where's Pac Man? No Pac Man. Is that no battle Pac-Man. music? <laughs> like in Pac Man World? Oh, it's a battle. Uh, next, uh, with this, uh, they've also periodically been doing these game recommendation tur- tournaments for mm. each of the allies. Mm. So a bunch of people oh, nominate yeah. games that they want to recommend to us, and then they put them into brackets. Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> but no, stuff that for they're recommending for us to play. Recommend it to me so I can play it again. <laughs> <laughs> so they've been doing this for a while. Uh, they've finally gone through and got everybody. Huber, you, 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 yours just finished up a couple weeks ago. Um, what do we got? And uh, so, uh, try, I'm trying to figure out what was, because I was going to do this a certain way. Okay. Uh, so, Same yeah, time. I asked Parasite Paladin to give me the top two for each. So, first, I'm going to see if you can guess cold for an ally, and then I'll give you the top two and see if you can guess which one actually okay. won it. Okay. So, for me, do you have any, any guesses on what they would have recommended for me? Since I'm the one that's looking at the thing. So Recommended for... Daniel Bloodworth. I accidentally saw this one. Final so Fantasy 15. Because <laughs> there's a car in it. I played that whole game. Uh. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh. Well, I was even surprised. All right. <laughs> we've, we've covered that. <laughs> uh. Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about how about Rogue Legacy Two? No, I have played a lot of that though. Okay. I think I don't know if I've gotten that far, even with the I number remember. of hours that I put I into remember, it. I but remember, yeah. I remember, I remember. Um, this is hard, dude. I, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know how. Could old be a mil- billion games. Could yeah. Be so the two that they went with, Thirteen Sentinels oh. versus Nine Nine Nine. Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. Wild. Oh, so okay. now you're getting a, a, a taste of where I the never Discord would have is guessed. at. Yeah, I, I never would have guessed okay. that. Okay. Never. RPGs will will reign <laughs> in this Discord. 
So which one do you think they went with out of those two? Probably 13 Sentinels. It's it's a big favorite of a mm, lot of humans. Maybe 999. <laughs> yep. It was 999. Oh, wow. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that one was actually a while back. Uh, and so we did at some point start it, like, when I was, like, on vacation last summer. But then, like, we didn't get back to it. So we need to get back to it because I feel like – and we were just getting over like some of the prologue stuff where they're setting up all the rules and yeah, all of this. And it was a little it. bit of a slow start. For sure. A lot of like, you got to meet every character yeah. and all of that. But yeah, visual novel. Hell yeah. Highly yeah. acclaimed. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. Uh, let's get Don over here because Don's next. Don? Any ideas, Don, what they might have recommended for you? Do you want him to approach the microphone? I do. He's approaching the microphone. Right Don is approaching the microphone. Approach the mic. We were waiting for Don to approach the microphone. <laughs> I'll need a clue. Well, well, if you don't get it real quick, you I'm just gonna throw out a guess. I'm going to say Watch Dogs 2. <laughs> oh, that's a good guess. I'm going to say Assassin's Creed Rogue. <laughs> Actually, that's not bad if you haven't played it yet. Good one. Uh, no. I'm going to say Foundation Whatever that that town builder where they oh. make their own paths or whatever, I don't know. Maybe we did. I'm gonna say guacamole. Ooh, nice. So Don, the two that they uh, they put up there for you, Subnautica. Ooh. Versus pocket car jockey. Oh, dude, pocket car jockey sounds sick. I think did I install that and not try it? I may have tried it. I think I finally tried it. Wait, I finally tried Pocket Car Jockey. Yeah, I was playing nice. that. Nice. Because that's fun. what they recommended for you, Don, was Pocket oh. Car Jockey. Oh, good. Yeah, I just recently played that finally. Actually. <laughs> someone, I think, was I was seeing someone recommend that in chat. That's why I finally... You got to play Bellatro. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I tried Bellatro. Dip my toes in Bellatro also. So these re recommendations are actually making it through the pipeline. Look at that. Hell nice. Yeah. Next week, source. dude, Bellatro. It's going down. Next week on the podcast. I'm going to play yeah. this week. Damiani. Any thoughts before we reveal what they might have pulled for you? Let's see. Two isometric games. <laughs> yeah, are these punitive or actually good recommendations? Diablo 4 and... No, I think they're supposed to be like, we think you would dig this yeah, if you try yeah, it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Genshin oh, I mean, Impact. Genshin, I already played Genshin Impact. Uh, um... Yeah, it was Final Fantasy VIII. Now they're all... Yeah, Final <laughs> Fantasy VIII. You crushed all their spirits. <laughs> Tundra Boy Mark made that joke. Uh, no, Damiani, what they got down for you was uh, Slay the Spire Dude. versus The World Ends With You. So. Well, I already played The World Ends With You, so I played the OG one back Damiani when it came out. cards. Yeah. What's yeah. Sl Slay the Spire is a card game? Yeah. Kind of. Uh, roguelite. Brutal difficult. It reminds Ooh. me of... Um, it, it has a FTL vibe, though. I've it, played a lot of it. It uh, reminds I, me of Hand of Fate, it. where it's a game that feels so impossible because of RNG. Hmm. It does It does feel like it comes down to RNG yeah. kind of a lot. Yeah. But yeah, I had, I had World Ends with you on DS and played through yeah. it. I don't well, think Slay I the Spire was finished the one it? Okay. that they got. Yeah. yeah. So Slay the Spire, recommended. Sick. See if, uh, if you're interested in that. They, there is no obligation on these, by the way. They did say that. This is just for funsies. I just meant you forget. I, I don't know. I forget that they're cards, like in Slay mm. the Spire. You know. I all yeah. Every every time there's like cards in a thing, I I I'm just like it's it's text in visual f like visual form. You know what I mean? Text is always in visual I, form. I knew you were gonna say that, but like you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Not always. Where it's just like it's like if you select your move in an RPG and it's just text. Or you select it and it's a card. It's the same thing. It's the same concept. Yeah, except different visually. I don't know. They shuffle. I don't build know. Build decks. Sure, yeah. Sure, now know. I'm gonna make a game where like the moves are words, but they're they're in a hand like they're t like cards. You know. And yeah, then I'm you well shuffle well. the words around. And then... <laughs> All right, get Gabby Actually, on that mic. that might mic. be what Crypt Master is. She can guess if she she might she might have already seen it, but we'll see if she remembers. He's she uh, she's already seen it. Ah, uh, okay. Well, anyone guess else? Say anyway. mafia. What anyone else then? Yeah. Mafia. You're guessing mafia. Yes. You're guessing mafia. I'll guess 
a different Barbie game than whichever one we played. <laughs> I didn't play that Barbie game, but I I played it as a kid. It's so I didn't. Good, no, man. I didn't play it on it's Trash so Babies, but I I finished it. I had it as a child. Oh, yeah. I played it all the time. Page Master, the computer game. I've never Ooh. seen Page Master. Nice. Page Master, the DVD of the movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, Gabby's was was really close. It was between Spirit Fa- Spirit Fairer. Ah, uh, okay. And Little Gator Game. I would love both of those. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, and Little Gator Game won that. It's also going on Game Pass. So. Got to turn on my Xbox for the first time in two years. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. Get that Little Gator Game. Uh, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really great. It's like a, a Breath of the Wild, but you can play it in one or two nights. Sick. Yeah. Uh, so like Tears of the Kingdom. No. 280 hours in that game. Uh, Isla. Hello. Any thoughts? What they might recommend to you? <sighs> no. <laughs> um, Siberia. Ooh. Good guess. The one with an S or a good C? Pull. The one with an S. The one nice. with an S. Isla, you're the only one that they tied on. They were they were deadlocked Ooh. on deadlocked. Valhalla. Which is V A one one Oh yeah Paul Dash A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a cyberpunk bartender action according to the theme page. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is how they try to describe it. Yeah, I know the game. Uh, and then the beginner's guide. I've played that. You have played that. Oh yeah, so I've played go. that a lot. So I that, that that narrows it down. So very very good recommendations, Jim. <laughs> All right, Huber, you're last. Balatro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was between Goodbye Volcano High mm. and To the Moon. To the ah. Moon. Which one was To the Moon again? To the Moon. There's like two doctors yeah. trying to fulfill a dying guy's wish. Sounds yeah. like <laughs> my style. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So which one do you think they landed on out of those two? Probably Goodbye Volcano High. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Sick. Okay. Ten votes to six. All right, Chet. Nice. All right, patrons. <laughs> Let's go. That was high on my list. It just fell through the cracks, as so many do. Never even got to Chia, dude. Oh. I know. Yeah, Chia's great. I know. Uh, they're I'm adding a lot of Renba. stuff to it, too, though, with the, the they're porting it to something. Nice. I think they're porting it to Switch, maybe, but it's, they're adding the same stuff to the other versions. So That's sweet. Uh, yeah, so they won't be doing any more of those, those recommendation tournaments, but keep an eye out for stuff that's in there. They are going to be starting up the next top 10 uh, in that Discord, which you get into if you become a $5 patron. Uh, and next month's top 10, or this month's top 10, is Fighting Game Supers. Oh. Uh, that's a fun that's like one. like a special move? Supers. Not just a special move, the supers. So they've what got the definitions, the layout, the rules. It's super. all fine. But, but you like, know. you don't. But you know, you can Hadouken by just like a quarter circle, but you're super. You usually have to go back and forth. And, you but know, that's like, a super. You need a meter. But like, Sub Zero's freeze. Not just the freeze. Those are just moves. No, they yeah. gotta have Maybe the super a fatality meter. will end they're up ultimate. Super super meter. I don't know. Their their final move, their biggest yeah. move, I guess. Yeah. We'll see how they, they we'll seems, see. classify it. It seems that. restrictive. No matter what they do, we're gonna be like, you're all crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like it goes back and forth. Sometimes it's perfect, and then sometimes <laughs> we're just like, yo, we're strike plus eight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what? The bar in where Valhalla takes place is called Glitch City? Or the city in which the bar is, is oh, Glitch okay. City. And that's a place in L.A. that most of my friends work at. <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably intentional. I wonder. Cause, yeah, because I think Brandon Sheffield worked on that. Brandon Jones? Nope. Uh, yeah, so the nominations, nope. <laughs> nominations for that top ten uh, will open up on Wednesday, April 10th. We got more to come, but if you've been enjoying this show so far, please take a second to like and subscribe and ring that bell on YouTube. Also, uh, if you're on those podcast services, leave a review there. Give some feedback. Uh, It helps us, and it helps you stay connected. Next up, uh, I got to check out. I got like a little uh, Discord preview, quick half-hour preview for Monaco 2. Monaco 2, dude. Uh, and uh, they were showing this at is GDC. Is this one called what mine is, What's Mine is Yours now? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, and throw this up. So uh, this is uh, we're going to play my review of the first Monaco, Monaco game. One. Monaco 1 to was so fun. To give you some, uh, some context if you don't remember Monaco. Chad, this game is Fun. This is back. With a capital F. 2013, the original game came out. 
Uh, apparently, they had the concept when they were working somewhere else back in 2004. Mm-hmm. And then when they made this, the first game in 2013, they were like, okay, we, we got to make something, you know, like on a budget. Let's cut it down to the bone uh, and put this out there. Yeah. And yeah, it was really fun. Like, it's I played a lot of it, so single fun. player. And then local uh, co-op, the lo- local co-op, is online incredible. co-op, incredible. And um, and so this is a heist game. Yo, we gotta stream this. It's, it's been too long. It's been too long, it's dude. Been too long. And you've got all of these different characters that have like different specialties and stuff. You know, like the cleaner and the this you know this guy and that guy. The uh, locksmith. Yeah, locksmith. Um, and um, and it was top down, very simple graphics. One thing that was interesting that they said is that there was like. A percentage of players who they just couldn't even like their brain couldn't compute what was happening on the screen <laughs> because the graphics are just like so simplistic. Yeah, it was like, what am I looking at? I don't understand. Um, but uh, unfortunately, even though like I got to look at some gameplay for Monaco Two, they're not showing gameplay footage yet. So we just have a couple of screenshots. We'll throw them up there when it's relevant. Uh, uh, but it is essentially, uh, it's kind of like. Going from like Dragon's Dogma to Dragon's Dogma Two, it's like okay, we made our 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 version that we could make at the time. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna make the thing we had in our head originally. You know, so the art style uh, is a lot more robust, and the levels have like multiple layers with like different floors and stuff on them. Uh, and there's just there's just a lot more um, that's going on. Um, you could probably throw out the teaser trailer, although I don't know if that gives you too much perspective because I think that was just like a cinematic. Um, but uh, but yeah, so you're you're playing with friends, pull off pull off all these different heists. It's still top down, um, but uh, they one of the other things that I think that they might have changed is I think that they got rid of the like the vision cone thing when you're walking around a level. Okay. So like in the first game, you could kind of see like almost like going out like a star around you. Like you could only see the level where your character would be able to see like very intense fog of war. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this, uh, I didn't see anything like that. So I I think what the way it kind of works is like you can see in the rooms that you're in. Um, and so, like, I've got the the one screenshot in the opera house um, where you can kind of see that, where, like, you can see the opera house, but then you can kind of see, like, this room on the side that's, like, dark and you can't see what's going on in there. Um, and then, uh, so the first mission that they showed, they had, uh, like, a cash uh, delivery in the opera house that you're supposed to, like, intercept and steal. Um, and... And they're saying that like there's like some like collectibles and stuff in the games or in the levels and, and stuff like that to like not only kind of give you a little bit more story, but also to like kind of give you some clues and things to, to things to look for. Uh, and uh, here we go. Here's a shot of what it, it looks like now. So this is the opera house level. And you can kind of see like in this room and like the lasers and the coins and all of that. But then on the outside, like that room that you haven't been to yet, that was just completely dark. Um, and then uh, there's also before you get into a level, yeah, this is really it's really kind of hard to to tell from the screenshots. Wow, it looks <laughs> yeah. different. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's not just like simple little shapes and stuff. Wow, it's like you've, you've got guards and decorations and oh plants gosh, and all of that. This game is gonna be amazing. <laughs> and lighting, we've got lighting now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's like and a this blue- guard is saying, "When will I be allowed to follow my dream and <laughs> dance?" <laughs> <laughs> um go to the uh the blueprint shot uh so before you go into the level there's like a a blueprint mode uh here it is and you can see some of the the layout and the icons uh but you don't necessarily know where the guards and the traps and like all of the items are uh but they say like as you do repeated runs like on a, the same level you get more information nice. for your planning stage hitman Right. <laughs> um, mastery. Level mastery. <laughs> but uh, it's also, um, it's like uh, there is some procedural generation to it. So the the one that they talked, the, the second level that they showed me was kind of like outdoors. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think they have a screenshot of it, unfortunately. But it was like more of a shipping yard. And the, Yo, I dig these characters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll walk through the characters in a second. But the shipping yard... 
like they had like underground tunnels, a junkyard, a factory, and a police station, and there's different elements to those. But then they re-rolled the seed, and so they still had those parts of the map, but they were in different spots. And then the same thing with like the guard patrols and the traps, because the one thing that they're wanting to do is they want every time you play it to still kind of feel a little bit like the first time you're seeing this level. Cool. Because the whole thing with Monaco is this sort of like back and forth between that stealth tension mm-hmm. and outright panic. Just full panic. <laughs> and like and and I I don't know if Austin Wintering is back for this, but the soundtrack on the original Monaco was so huge because it was all piano. Mm-hmm. It had like this ragtime vibe. Game's and so fun. when you're sneaking around, you, you've got this light little plank and like, dun, 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 you know. And then you get spotted. And it's like, dun, 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 like, the piano was just going off. And I was like, get away, get away, get away. So fun. One of the other mechanics that Monaco has too is that like, like a lot of the tools and stuff you pick up in the missions, but then you also have to pick up coins to kind of like act as like the currency to be able to use them. So Economy. Like, yeah, one of the things they showed here was like there's a coffee item, and if you have enough coins, then you can activate the coffee, and that's like a speed boost. Or like mm. there's, uh, you know, there's like in the first game, there's like shotguns and crossbows and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but to get to these characters, because just like in the first game, there's like different specialists. So the characters that we've seen so far, which I'm guessing there's going to be some more. Uh, Cosmo uh, is the girl in pink with the hat. She's also got a uh, Pomeranian named Panzer. She's like the charmer. So she can charm the guards uh, or she can even send the dog over to like, oh, he's a cute dog. And the, and, and the dog gets distracted. Yeah, nice. yeah. That's fun. Um, then you have uh, on the, the far right, the blue guy with the glasses. That's Some hacker. Gibson. He's the hacker. Yeah. Uh, and so when you're doing like the the hacking and interaction with traps and stuff, he's he can like go faster. He can like make that bar go up faster to like nice. hack things. So it's like there's just one part where it's like you had to like get into like the room and like hack the door while the guard is patrolling and like get a smoke bomb and like get out and get to the toilets or whatever. It's like, but with him he could do that a little bit more quickly. Uh, then the woman in purple with the big afro is Sake, uh, and she's got a crossbow with stun bolts. Uh, then the far left is Una. Uh, she's a big bruiser. She can actually punch guards and punch shortcuts through walls. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, and then um, you can uh, you can change characters. There's, so this is something I think is new, because I don't think you could change characters on the fly. In the first Monaco, I think you were, like, set with who you had, who you went in with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with this, you can change characters by, like, hiding into a bush. Oh, wow. And so, like, when you're hiding in a bush, then you can swap characters. Or, if, like, hiding into, like, a stall, like a toilet stall. You can go in with come character, swap character, mm-hmm. come out. Interesting. So, that's interesting. Because they're, yeah, it's that, it's that whole thing of, like, you can play it single player or you can play it multiplayer. Yeah. And both are valid, you know. Uh, and they said they're still going to have a split screen as well as online multiplayer, which Perfect. is great. Who's the green dude? The green dude is like the bartender. Oh. Uh, and I don't remember what his deal is, but I don't. I didn't write a note down for him, and I didn't get any like further notes. So either they didn't tell me or I didn't get it in time because this was rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fast trying to get all this information uh, in my head. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, another one of the items that used the coins for is the disguise. And what was interesting with the disguise is that, like, it's got, like, a meter. Like, it it, it burns away on line of sight. Mm. So if, like, a guard is looking at you, then, like, your disguise wears out the longer that somebody s- sees you. Just burning a hole <laughs> through you. Um, and then I think that's basically... Oh, the other thing with the, the layout and the stuff like that is that there's, like, a... They've got like an AI kind of director um, for those like level layouts because it's supposed to kind of work with the flow of the level and all of that and where the enemies are placed and all of that. So, but still a ways off, obviously, since they're not even <laughs> showing any footage publicly yet. No platforms release date, but reminding me that game exists. Yeah. 
uh, and that'll be a fun group stream. I'm very excited for that. I really enjoyed the first scam, those local co-op sessions. So definitely on my radar. And I really like the new the new art style. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 looking good so far. Mm-hmm. We just yeah, we need to be able to show you. Yes. <laughs> uh next up, I'm not sure if you got to check this out, Huber, uh, but uh Windblown. I'm curious what you think of this. This is from the guys that made Dead Cells. Sweet. Uh this is their next game. Good game. Uh and uh, they've actually had some closed alpha recently. Um but yeah, they got a, a bigger uh, gameplay reveal here, uh, and it's very different than Dead Cells, mm-hmm. at least in terms of perspective. Uh, it's like uh, top-down, sort of isometric, mm-hmm. zipping around yeah. very quickly. Yeah, Dead Cells has incredible combat, so I'm already seeing that in the first 10 seconds of this trailer. It looks yeah. really sweet. For some reason, they keep cutting to the shot of like... Like your character puking, and I don't know what that's about. Okay. I was like reading yeah. through the email. I was like, why do you puke? What happened here? Just, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Weird humor, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this is, uh, it can be either single player or three player co op. Oh. Um, and uh, and they're talking, they talked a lot about like all the different kinds of like weapons and builds that you can have. So you've got like this big old butcher knife that yeah. they show. They see other ones where like, uh, there's like, Gun weapons and shuriken and and all kinds of stuff. Uh, definitely more of like a cartoonish. Well, I mean, Dead Cells already kind of cartoonish, but this is like a cell shading, 3D. Uh, and then yeah, they have this thing with fish. Like you can get like in addition to like the rest of your loadout, you can find fish. And the one example they gave was like this fish will like you shoot it out, and it will like swallow a bunch of enemies. Um, but it's not, it sounds like they're on like really long cooldowns. Got it. So you so got to coordinate. Super, your super fish. Yeah, your mm. your your fish is your 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 super attack there. Put it on the list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this looks rad. Definitely one to watch. Yeah. I Dead Souls is excellent. I trust that that studio, you know, coming off of an incredible game, and that's a really good trailer. Early access though, so I'll see you in 2025. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Damiani, what do you think? I mean, yeah, the combat looks really good. Um, in fact, you can play with other people. I mean, yeah. in that type of genre, being able to play with other people in a, a roguelite is kind of a, I'm not blanking on how many other games allow you to like really do that. Um, so that's kind of like a neat concept. And yeah, I feel like I saw like a trailer for this at some point in the past. And I was like, like, because they're like animal-like creatures, but it's like hyper-violent, like, yeah. like, because they're illustrating like the death, like very bloody or something, like the like the characters exploding, so cute, cuddly characters and like one-shot deaths, basically, like in the in the trailer. So, like, it just illustrating earlier when I was saying like you d- it didn't stick out with uh, um Eternal Strand. It's like this kind of pops a little bit more, no, and it also is cartoony. I was not as into the, the art style. It was only when oh. I like really started like looking at the gameplay a little bit longer. I was like, okay, I, you know, like I'm not in on the way this looks necessarily, but I like it looks like it. Feels okay. Good, so yeah, I mean, from the gameplay trailer, I think I like how this looks a little bit more. Mm. I mean, it seems like I don't know. It seems a little bit more unique to me with, with some of like, especially with some of the. Uh, yeah, I mean, like the base environments. Sure, I can see what you're saying, but like the set dressings they add add like a little bit more, like the, the add like the density and like a little like there's like one where they show like a, a little tent, like it looks like a hideout thing that he just walks by, like little touches like that. I guess when it's not just like the environment repeating, it's just geometry repeating over and over again. Like you got to go in there and do some like you know work basically. Yeah, uh, and one of the other things that you know has definitely stood out over time with Dead Cells is the support the, the for that game. that game. For like five years. Oh, yeah. They just exactly. like kept coming out with expansions yeah. and crossovers and that Castlevania thing at the end. Mm-hmm. And just like, man. So, it'd be, yeah. I, I think... Oh, yeah, look, completely different game since I played it. <laughs> probably be pretty good. Yeah. This is probably going to be a good video game. Yeah. So, but yeah, we'll see. PC early access I would coming put- up. I would put my money on that game if I were allowed to be in a fantasy critic. Mm-hmm. Hint, hint. <laughs> we can't. Uh, we can't bet on early access games. Oh, that's true. They go into. Ha, they ha, go into ha. early access. They can't. Ha, 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 ha. Because we, would, we we could know too much, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Even though that's much. the whole point is that we generally know too much, but. Yeah. <laughs> also, this week, 
Apparently, Ninja Theory founder Tamim Antonatis is no longer at the studio. You add this headline with Partying. how long Hellblade 2 has taken, and you can't help but theorize what the hell is going on. The, but just uh. the, the way this went down is bizarre. Exactly. Because they had a preview event. They invited people to the studio. People have really good impressions of this game, by the way. Yeah. Um, some people are you know, saying, like, oh, it's only 30 frames per second, but... Mm-hmm. At the same time, they're like, this is the next-gen graphics that you are looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it better be. <laughs> but, you know those next-gen graphics you've been looking for? <laughs> look, <laughs> look at look this. At this. <laughs> uh, but anyways, Polygon was there, and they're like, we went through that whole preview event, and we never saw it to meme, and so they emailed Xbox, and they're like, oh, yeah, he's no longer with the studio. And... What? <laughs> like, that's it. That's all they know. It's bizarre. He's just not there anymore, even though he wrote and directed the first game. That is bizarre. Check dude. him out on the gram, man. He's, he's very uh, involved. He's partying on boats right now. <laughs> he got his payday from Microsoft. Yeah. This is true? I was, re- I was reading the thread about... Well, yeah, I, I'll, I'll send it to you is while he, you keep Is talking. he really? Or are you just... I mean, it, it, and this, this is a meme image. I mean, okay. someone, I thought, linked his actual Instagram account. Uh, Super Ninja Tam, is that his handle? I don't know. That's what comes up when you search him. It, it could be. He's on a, like a boat. It says Cape Town, Western Cape. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like partying on a boat. Okay. Oh, Mr. Ripley. Dude. I'm on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> when does Ripley come out? What's up? Yeah, I'm looking at his account right now. It's out? Came out last night. Photo oh, bombing the, yeah, yeah. It says photobombing the girls of Cape Town. Okay. Don't, and he's got like a thing that. like that. Him looking like a pirate on a pirate ship. All Bizarre. right. No idea what's happening. Yeah, just strange because this well, game out? has... Ripley. Ripley. It's a oh. show. Uh, this game has, as we know, you know, taken so long to come out. So when you have a weird situation like this, it's hard not to put them together and group them together, you know? For the longest time, we've been just like... You know, where is Hellblade? What is going on there? Why is it taking so long? Oh, you know, we had COVID and, you know, and there was a pandemic and you know, there, was, there was a smaller team. Like this game is just taking a while, whatever. But then you hear this and it's like, was there more? Like, were there, was there behind the scenes trouble? Like, what is right? So interesting. Yeah. Just the strange that it's like, yeah, he didn't leave with like, I've loved my time here. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, best of wishes to the team and et, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah, weird. Yeah. But the previews have been good for it. So that's reassuring. Yeah. He might have left a while ago because the spokesperson said that. Exactly. Yeah, he was involved in the early stages. Mm. Huh. Don't know. Very strange. Uh, Very excited, though. What's the date on it now? May 24. First, I want to say so I close. missed it last week. I, for whatever reason, I don't know whether it was just like my eyes glazed over or if it was like eyes glazed um, over. I don't because like I source <laughs> I source multiple lists and go through them and make sure that I've got everything. Yeah, if it's not from a it's, Commodore sixty four, his eyes just source. glazed right over. You know? But you know, like I had a lot of weird games on that list, and like somehow I ended up missing Hellblade. I'm like, what? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I remember. Things happen, to, I guess. I don't know. To me, the one I asked at the event for Capcom in front of them, is, I wonder if he was the guy I asked in front of, was it him or the other guy that I asked uh, to the Japanese side if uh, DMC didn't meet sales expectations, would they consider going back in the other direction towards the traditional oh franchise? Gosh. And I think he walked over to me and said, you know, thanks for basically asking if they're going to fire us if we don't do a good job in front of us. I'm like... <laughs> I, I mean, like, well, I mean, it's what everyone wants to know. I'm sorry. Like that, that question is like the evil of doing my job. It's like, it's like the number no. one question people want to know. <laughs> sorry. Well, that wouldn't necessarily be true, but you know. Yeah. I didn't mean like they'd get like fired or anything. It's like they may, maybe they just asked them like, Hey, could you try making it different or something? I don't know. Exactly. I didn't like, yeah, it wasn't like, dude, why'd you destroy devil may cry or some crap? Like, <laughs> I was just like, Hey, if it doesn't live up to expectations, would you consider going back, you know, to the, previous style of Devil May Cry. That, that was all it was. Yeah. It's not, not... I feel like it's so hard for a studio to just, like, continually make amazing games, you know? Oh, yeah. It's probably the hardest thing yeah. about being a game like, studio. Yeah, like, I'm just thinking about, like, how much I used to love Blizzard and, and Rocksteady 
and like especially when you fire everyone. Yeah, and, well, and even even like Ninja Th- Ninja Theory, like for a moment there was like mm-hmm. one of my favorite studios. Like this studio is so good, just like Enslaved and DMC and and yeah. Hellblade, and then just like it's taken so yeah, it's just taken a long time, so long of like fallen. Fallen off of, of love a little bit there, and it's like, do you think there'll be a day you bring me back? What's up? Do you think there'll be a day you'll say that about Naughty Dog? It's gonna be tough, dude. It's gonna be tough. Okay. I don't know. It could always happen though. Like, I never okay. thought I would fall out of love with Blizzard, you know, because I just like grew up That's with a good them point. and yeah. loved them for decades, and now it's just like nothing they do really excites me anymore. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, just wild. Well, I don't think we're there yet with Ninja Theory. No way. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying it has been like so long yeah. since they put out a banger. Yeah. So Since they put out anything. Yeah, well, exactly. No, they did have Bleeding Edge. That's true. <laughs> they did have Bleeding Edge. We, we like to forget that. We like okay. to forget that one. I, I mean, I didn't play a lot of it. Like when I, when I tried it out, I liked it. But yeah, it did not have the legs. Yeah. Um, Tales of Kinzera Zao revealed their voice cast and... The game will be playable in either English or Swahili. So cool. Which is pretty sick. Oh, neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It also is going to be on PlayStation Plus day one. Huge get. That's huge. Biggest get. Yeah. Remember last time we were talking about it, I was nervous because Prince of Persia was like, you know, didn't yeah. sell massive. And that has a, such an established name. It's such a brand. So I was like, oh, man, is that going to like carry over to this game? But I think having it on PS Plus is yeah. huge. And I think that the price is lower, too. I don't remember mm-hmm. off the top of my head exactly. But, I, 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 yeah, I think they're like keeping everything in check. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, weird one. Uh, Matthew Karch of Saber Interactive, uh, who was at Embracer before they broke off the other <laughs> week, uh, he's been going doing the rounds with interviews. Uh, and... He did this interview with GamesIndustry.biz defending Embracer Group. Oh my god! Talking about yeah. it's like, oh yeah, he's a you know he's a great guy. He's not really a suit. You know, he's a gamer and all this stuff. You know, talking about about Lars Wingerforce. Uh, but during that interview, he said, "Quote: When we lost that transformational deal back in May of last year, I don't know if it was ever officially disclosed to Savvy or not." Co co co. I'm like, but what? What? You don't know if it was ever officially said, and then you just say it. In an interview. Yeah, is that like illegal? I don't know. That, that's wild. That's because it's like, did you do, was that a slip or did you intentionally like throw that out as a dagger but smiling? Like, it's so weird. It's so weird. Uh, it's, a, it's a succession plot line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then also he told IGN that the KOTOR remake is alive and well. Mm, so they keep we can, juggling that ball. Oh, we can we can trust everything Embracer says for sure. Well, I mean, it's a saber now, but yeah. Got it. Yeah, I don't trust anyone affiliated <laughs> <laughs> with Embracer whatsoever. <laughs> there is zero trust. Yeah. There appear to be many different companies called Savvy, so I'm, I'm wondering which one. They're talking about it? the Savvy group, the Saudi Arabia. Yeah. But... It's like, okay, that's interesting. Oh, okay, yeah, here they are. It was not really a secret anyways, but I th- yeah, but it's just strange. For somebody that would know, <laughs> to be like... They're insane. Yeah. I don't know if it was ever confirmed. Insane. Ah, uh, play this lovely, lovely trailer here. The Rose and Camellia Collection is coming out on Switch April 16th, including five games... From the ridiculous games. slap fighting series oh, and yeah. motion control uh, with the Joy Cons. There are five of these? Along with the two player versus mode. How are oh, there yeah. five of these? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, it is it is gonna be a fun time, a group stream. Yeah, Hopefully I, I Damiani can find a way for achieve it yourself to implement Rose and Camellia. You either make a 10 out of 10 what game or a, like a, just a game with a freaking ridiculous premise. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, you're just slapping oh, people. okay. So yeah, you don't wild. remember these? Yeah, these, these were, yeah, these Gosh. were the, the hot memes back in the day. Yep. I think they're originally Flash games, but hmm. good stuff. Uh, <laughs> Counter Attack. So funny. Yes. God, it's funny. Smart. Uh, roll this next one. 
Uh, Arcade Paradise VR oh, okay. also oh, has Arcade a release Paradise. date. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's coming out April 25th, just Sick. a couple weeks. Don't skip bit of normal Arcade Paradise good chat. Don't soundtrack. skip it. It's such good a good soundtrack. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. The spoof good. soundtrack. It makes, it's the one that like takes all popular songs and like <laughs> yep. makes parody versions. Can, and not quite Weird Al level. But. Uh, truly on my Mount Rushmore of games to stream. This game was so, so fun. Those late night streams. Like, this game is just addicting and wholesome and excellent. There's like a little bit of a story in there, like narrative. Uh, that doesn't get in the way and actually just adds adds a lot to the the stakes of of your arcade. All the mini games, not all of them, but many of them are extremely fun. I really recommend that game. Yep, uh, it's coming out for MetaQuest two, three, and Pro. Twelve fully realized VR cabinets, uh, in addition to uh, twenty seven of the games from before. It's wild. So it's a lot of new stuff in there. Yeah. Plus, like, they're showing, like, in the thing, like, they've just the changed the interactions. Yeah, so, so, like, cool. yeah, you actually scrub the toilet. Feels by like hand a, like a half that. sequel yeah. almost, honestly. Yeah. He's uh, so hyped for this, dude. Play it. Play this it. is, like, my number one anticipated right now. Incombini. So hyped. This was showed off at uh, GDC, uh, but uh, yeah, pretty they put out sure a they now. referenced Shenmu in an interview, dude. I'm I'm effing ready for this game uh, right now. <laughs> I want it right now. I can see why. Give, yep. it, give it to me right now, please. Yeah. So you manage a Japanese convenience store in the 1990s, uh, and then not only do you have to stock the shelves, but you also chat the cu- chat with the customers and help with their problems and all of that. Uh, that's going to be coming out to PC and consoles, 2025. 2025. Five. But yes, gotta wait, Huber. First reveal, Huber. <laughs> hey, All it's right. gonna go up head to head with GTA Six. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, they would, uh, you know, they'll mod game, it into GTA Six. Oh wait, it's not game. coming to PC right away. Sorry. <laughs> well, let it cook then. Awesome. I'm happy about it. Make this game legit. Like that is such a cool concept. I love the the feel and the look of it. I love that it's on every system as well. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I don't rush that one. I, I'm, I'm excited for it so much. People that were playing in GDC were recommending it. Yes. So I saw, like, yeah, snapshots, photos, you know, of it, of the stations there, and, like, glad when we got that trailer. Yeah. Awesome. So excited. Uh, this one's been making around for a couple of weeks mm-hmm. now, but I wanted to bring it up because we haven't brought it up here. Uh, this is a insane. Sc- screen bound. This is the most insane thing I've seen in a long I'm, time. I'm very excited Whoa, about this. So you're you're playing this? on basically a Game Boy. It's insane. Uh, that you always have in front of you when you're walking Ooh. through in first person. Uh, so you're playing Wait. the same level. Same it's level. 2D and 3D at the same time. Seems and it gets so- even crazier that it has a 2D level designer that generates the 3D level. Yeah. So it's my could you just play it off the 2D screen then and win? Or do you need to actually juggle like balancing like on the screen and the 3D environment? Well, I mean, you're in a 3D environment, so I'm guessing that there's going to be things that like you can only do in 3D. Like- Damn, I guess I want to, if I could just play on the little screen right that. That'd be amazing. Because <laughs> it'd be a good game to watch for other people. Like, it'd be fun to watch because, like, you'd be watching the 3D while you're, like, I yeah. don't know. But I imagine that's not, you got to, like, look up, you know, at some points. Yeah. That's, I mean, like, I my worst that, nightmare now is juggling two things like that. I think the is in front of your face no matter what. Yeah, I don't think you can move this, the screen out of the way. Can't holster it. And I think it might be, because I'd have to look at it again maybe, but it's, like, it's almost like you can't see the enemies. Like, they might be invisible in the real world or whatever. Um, Don is angrily repeating, it's like Fez, it's like Fez. <laughs> think of Fez. I don't think it's that much like Fez. I don't know. I'm just relaying it so Don will shut up. Got it's it. like Fez. Thanks, Don. <laughs> Thanks, Don. It's like Fez. It's like Fez. Damn it. Don't worry, Don, I got a nod for you coming up in, in a second. Don't worry. <laughs> Dragon's Dogma 2 sold 2.5 million copies so far. That's right. That's right. Double it. Uh, Triple it, 50 million copies. Yeah, 50, 50 million. million. Uh, speaking of, of which, we won't be getting our sales till late this month because of the way the, the retail calendar falls. Good, let them stack. So our, Shady. Our March sales report we're going to get in the beginning of May. It's crazy. Step it up, Pisky right. Teller. Yeah, okay. No, it's, right. it's, it's, it's a thing that like... Too busy delaying watching the Padres, sales dude. reports it's now. It's not delayed. All right, industry. <laughs> it's not delayed. It's I delayed. Asked them about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's because uh, to keep the tracking uh, similar year to year, like there's like they they say it's like a f- four to five four something like that. The These way the sales reports are as delayed the weeks as are always too. the same <laughs> every year, so that you can compare them accurately. All right. So. All right, we need to redo the calendar. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a, we need a patch update for the calendar. That's a point please. on its own. <laughs> patch it. Uh, patch it. Content warning. That's actually the yeah. name of the game. It's Everyone's been playing this damn game. Yes. This is everywhere. It was released on Monday. It's, Shadow dropped from the makers. It's lethal of company. It's a new le- lethal company. Go. Yeah. We gotta stream it. Yeah. Uh, four player co op game. You take a camera with your friends. And you go down to like some dark abyss somewhere, and like you're trying to to get like Blair Witch Project. You're trying to film scary stuff. Love Blair Witch. And then come back out with whoever's left alive, <laughs> <laughs> and upload them, and get a bunch of likes on your video. There you go. Oh uh, yeah, find these creepy little guys. Uh, it's interesting to me, like the the space that you explore is like. What is that game? Mundown? Mun- I was just going to say yeah. it's like Mundown. Mundown, yeah. dude. It's Mundown, but yeah. Yeah. Because it's like black and white, like sketchy looking. Like actually like a sketchbook. Oh, it's so crazy. Some cool freakos really selling. Yeah, okay. I like these freakos. Yeah. And then they're just watching the video. Yeah, that's what I love. Like you come back and you got to upload your videos. Sure. Uh, that's that hot. was free for the first 24 hours. And then uh, now it's eight, eight bucks. Thanks. So not bad. Not bad. Uh, and back to crazy executive quotes. On his way out the door. Here we go. On the yeah. official PlayStation Here podcast. We go. Jim Ryan. Here we go. Confirmed that the PlayStation 2 has sold over 160 million units. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> this is one of those like shady backdoor deal NFL committee <laughs> ruling on stuff without the input here. Just just absolutely insane. Moving the goalpost. Yeah. Like all the power. It's like, yeah, I'm just gonna say those numbers are a little bit higher. <laughs> Sorry, Nintendo. You gotta you gotta work a little bit harder to get that harder. switch sales numbers. Maybe yeah, it must be nice to be able to say that. I mean, <laughs> it'd be like, you know, if like for, for if Mahomes could step up there and be like, "Hey, the Roger Goodell says uh, I got another championship ring. What are you gonna do about it? You know, I didn't win another Super Bowl. I get another ring, baby. He said it. It oh happened. God. You got you can't you can't beat me. Or I got extra yards now. There you go. Yeah. Does he have any um, receipts for this? Or well, no, how, how could this be? Here's how the thing. Where the receipts? receipts were before. Huber, people have been debating this for years oh, because... Okay. So there's really no way to, like, fully... This we... is the closest we've got to a confirmation. Okay. Because basically what happened is in 2013, Sony stopped updating PS2 sales numbers at $155 million. Yeah. And then they, they we went through 55. this period where they were just saying, we've sold X number of consoles every year, where they were just, like, mixing the PS2 and PS3 together. Got it. And, and then later years, they just started saying how many PS3s had sold. So, so people had done idea. napkin math to try to, it's like, okay, it's probably in this ballpark, but yeah. we don't actually know. Okay, yeah. so it could, be, it could oh. be correct. It could be, yeah. but also PS2 stopped production in January 4th of the fall, like 2013. So like after, like shortly after they started reporting numbers, yeah. they stopped making any PlayStation so he says 2s, sold, period. He says they sold an extra 5 million in that decade. Like 5 to 6 million is what he's claiming. They sold, yeah. Okay. But it was an insanely popular system. Yeah. People, I mean, Get how many years did we have to sit through Madden trailers mm-hmm. for PS2? I mean, is this just important because, like, Switch, Switch was yeah. maybe beating it? Because they want to, like, yeah. Well, it's, like, the, the highest-selling the, console ever. So the so joke is the now that, yeah. like, Nintendo has to, like, delay to Switch uh, to again now. <laughs> because, like, nah, <laughs> Switch needs more time. <laughs> like, we got to delay it another quarter. It is very <laughs> funny timing because Switch 2 is on the horizon. So it's just like, oh, by the way. But I still think even when Switch but 2 But he's leaving. Out, that's, what, that's, like, that's yeah. kind of why, like, like, you know. Pat himself yeah. on the back for all his accomplishments. Yeah, like, yeah we sold 160 million PlayStation 2s. You know? Okay, so, th- so there was context of why he even said it to begin with? Right. Oh, I believe him then. Yeah, sure. Because they were just talking about his career and like everything yeah. that he's done at Sony you know, before he sure. got out the door. Seem- it but seems correct to me. Waiting. Unless someone you know. has like hard receipts against, I would give him the benefit of the doubt on this one. Yeah. He was just waiting for the opportune moment. The yeah. opportune <laughs> moment. What's Switch at right now, Damiani? 
It's gotta be so uh, close. A hundred and thirty seven okay. or forty. What switch one one thirty seven million today. And it'll sell uh, for so apparently. many more yeah. years. Even when Switch Two comes out, Switch One hundred thirty nine point three six million. Okay. And it hasn't had a price drop, people. I know. It has not. That's right. Price price factor in the, like, the price drop into the, the equation Dude. here for the PS2. Yeah. <laughs> how many price drops it got. And then someone come up, some price math genius key, come up with an equation to say if Switch had dropped price, how much more it would have sold because of a price That's drop. That's on that and then let's, that price, Let's though. do that. Let's That's do that. Them. Let's do that. It'll drop when 2 comes out and sell. Different so economies. Right. It's like comparing... Johnny. Sports players between different eras. You can't really do that well, because you, different times. Yeah, then you have to factor in inflation because, like, ah. money back then was, oh, sure. was stronger Dude, you, than, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You have way easier of a time selling a console now than back then. Game Every time a game comes out, it's a number one selling more in a series. more competition now than ever, even though there's more, more playable. But, like, playing. for hardware, way because more. you have, like... Because back then, when PS2, when PS2 was coming out, you didn't even have like smartphones yet. They weren't even out. They didn't exist. So right. it wasn't even competing with the mobile market yet, like it's doing now, where like consoles kind of like you know struggle a little bit more. It's why Switch stand with the hybrid. Now that's why you're hearing everyone say PlayStation's even thinking about another handheld. Microsoft's interested in the handheld. It's like oh crap, the handheld market. It's back. It's console Microsoft market is shrinking. Looking at like the ROG ally and all that stuff, and they're like, yeah, hey. Uh, our operating system kind of sucks for this, doesn't it? <laughs> Easier right. in some ways, harder in PS2 is well, an affordable DVD player. That is very true. Yeah, that definitely yeah, helped yeah. it out a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Switch, why Switch, why don't you get Netflix? Like, what the <laughs> hell? Yeah, you don't dude. get Netflix on I, Switch, man. They, they, look, at, they put, they, they look at what Switch is not putting on there, and it's still doing all this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damiani, though, for real. Do you think... If, if if the rumors are true and the Switch 2 is delayed to 2025, do you think that prompts Nintendo to price drop this year? Do you think they'll finally do it? Because I think not the, a lot moment, else. the moment that Switch 2 is announced, it is a rapidly ticking clock from the price drop, the price cut for the OG Switch. Oh, we're sure. I think that it will happen within six months of that announcement. There'll be a price drop for the Switch. Hmm. I, I don't know if it has anything to do with like trying to move it past the goal but like i i think you have it's the reality has never had a price cut i understand you know there's like incredible inflation going on with like like some stuff right now so it's like they, they you know they're trying to be justified in it but as soon as you announce that new console people are gonna be like i'm gonna wait for that i'm gonna wait for that so you need to clear out the existing inventory Gotta lower the price, man. It's like just economics 101 right there. So it's gonna happen. Do you happen. think they'd lower it 50 or 100? I think they'll probably just do a 50 price cut. That's, I think it'll that's drop. That's my guess, yeah. Do you lose the game, though? 50 and a bundle. Ooh, maybe, yeah. You get go with the game. Odyssey with Considering it. it's been so long. Yeah, but it's they'll Nintendo. They'll come with an older, yeah. a pre-2023 yeah. game will be included with it. Well, not the Mario Kart. Let's go Mario Kart. There you go. <laughs> You gotta oh, get back on the bundle before I think. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, they gotta they gotta get back on the charts, like charting higher. <laughs> All right, it's time for love and respect. Love and respect. Love and respect. From Tim Lenzen. Hello, everyone. Hello. At the beginning of the month, I realized that the walls in my apartment are pretty empty. So I thought I could hang up something nice. So I went looking for cool video game pictures. But in the end, there was nothing that completely convinced me. So I thought to myself, why not have something made that I like? Oh. Said and done. Smart. The result is now custom artwork uh, for every personal game of the year, starting with 2011. Oh. That's badass. I didn't want to go back too far, and Dark Souls was just a perfect start. My plan now is to add a new picture every December. So yeah, let's go ahead and, and throw that up. Get a look at this guy for viewers. But yeah, so there's like basically like the box art, but like poster Ooh. dimensions for each one of these. And then I see we got we got Dark Souls, we got XCOM Enemy Badass. Unknown, Last of Heck Us, yeah. South Park, The Stick of Truth. Super cool. Rise oh. of the Tomb Raider, XCOM 2, South Park's Fractured But Whole, Big Sarthuk, Sarthuk right of those games. Uh, God of War, Disco Elysium, Last of Us Part Two, It Takes Two, very nice, Elden Ring, and then Baldur's Gate Three. 
I really like that The Last of Us Part Two is directly under The Last of Us. Why yeah. are some of them left justified? What's that? Some of the titles are left justified and some are center justified. Oh, the titles. But this is very cool. It looks yeah. like disc plates or something. How are they doing these? The printing is interesting. It's yeah, so yeah, it, it is. Yeah. But yeah, it looks them. really nice. Um, so they had their question. Do you have any video game art in your home uh, more than just a poster or a figure from a collector's edition? Best regards from Germany. Out of frame, I got like a Zelda 64 thing like on my wall. Nice. It's not in my shot. Well, it doesn't have to be in your shot. It's oh, just, yeah. Do you have it. something? Yeah. 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 I used to have way more back in the day, but not anymore. Got it. Yeah. And a bunch of posters, but they're all, everything is still actually in, packed up in my boxes because mm-hmm. after moving twice in one year, I was like, I'm not unpacking shit again. I like don't need out. So uh, I haven't, yeah, I have like nothing. Although I'm pretty sure my, like my mom was thinking about getting like a, some kind of like video game, like poster thing for me, like a thing of like the controllers or whatever, maybe mm-hmm. like some artwork that, but we never ended up getting that because I was like, I don't really anything like that i generally like except for like that one period like where i had like a like all those nintendo club nintendo the old club nintendo not the current one where you could redeem things for like the posters I, they still have that but like this is the o- older version of it uh i got like a ton of those collectors posters I just got them all framed and put them all over our apartment remember when i like lo- like loved all of them we just put them mm-hmm. all over the place and then they're just all packed up now and like ever since I packed them like up, like I just haven't put anything out, and I just have plain walls now. So, hmm. eh. I, I know you have a lot of art. Do you have any video game stuff? Uh, we have a decent amount. I I made a rule. <laughs> we, I mean, not a rule, but like I prefer our our video game and nerd stuff to stay in the office in our house. You know, and Sophia came. She showed me a, a meme the other day that was like. Anytime I run out of space for my figures and one of them makes it into the living room and my spouse is like, well, how did that get here? You know, and I'm like, that's me. Every time I see one of like Aragorn crept onto the mantle and I was just like, mm, okay, like, all right. Uh, no, but we have a monster hunter thing. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were done. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> go yeah, ahead. Grabbing the mic. No, you go. You go. Uh, we have a monster hunter thing. Um, I mean, she has a lot of figures. Uh, we have a lot of like buttons and pins and stuff. It's like a lot of stuff up in there, but it's all kind of like, you know, it looks like in world kind of, you know, it's like, let's go hunting and like whatever. Uh, most of it's like the nerd stuff is movies and shows like, uh, San Junipero, that kind of stuff. Go ahead, Gab. Sorry, you keep turning your head to me like I, I, I should start speaking. Because I'm trying to include you in the <laughs> conversation. I don't um, know. My recommendation for cool art is to get a ticket to like a, a cheaper con and then just go to the artist alley. Mm. I got all my coolest like, you know, subtle nerd art from from a, a free ticket to Anime Expo I got in like 2019. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Yeah, I will second that. Yeah, Jeremy Hoffman has a ton of that stuff. Like so much that, like, yeah, like I think like John Gibson has like the catalog and like the authority of, of, of uh, over his collection yeah. of, of so much crazy art that he's got. I've been meaning to replace one of my big ones in the middle, and I just haven't got around to it. I want to get like a sick Resident Evil one or something. I don't have a ton of stuff that's not like a Nintendo Power poster, but uh, I've got. Uh, it's very barely considered video game art. I have uh, a canvas print of Rivendell from the Lord of the Rings. Rivendell. That's got, it, it was like a promotional item they sent out for totally the War of the North. I remember. Yeah. And it's like, this is this is just a painting for the Lord of the Rings, but I'll take it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, even though it's still a poster, it's not quote unquote just a poster. I have a Super Metroid poster. Uh, that is signed by Samus herself. Sick. Hand numbered, only two thousand produced. That was sold uh, by Nintendo uh, Power back in the day. Wow. Um, and uh, also glows in the dark. That's it's sweet. really sick. Wait, signed by Samus herself. So who do you think signed it? I'm curious. I mean, it's probably just someone on someone probably that Nintendo hired that knows calligraphy because it's a good looking signature. So. What? Yeah. Sick. We should oh. get a. 
Digital what? Eclipse should do a uh, interactive thing on that. Make it a game. The, find the, out who signed. Find out who signed Blood's poster. Yeah. Oh, and give us a give us a history. I, the of Metroid, Nintendo Power guy might know. Yeah, dude. Probably does. I want. I want that the most. I want like if they ever get that access. I know you're talking about like games, but I would love to have like access like '90s Nintendo of America and just mm-hmm. like have like behind more behind the scenes footage, more interviews with the people who work there, mm-hmm. and maybe like you know people work like the game counts or stuff like that. It'd be so sick to see that stuff. Yeah, if you've never seen, um, he has an account on Twitter and probably on other socials as well, but the Art of Nintendo Power is a guy who oh, yeah. collects a lot of the original artwork and sculptures and things that they used for Nintendo Power magazine, specifically a lot of the covers. Uh, and so like the old like Dr. Wily, the old Mario mm-hmm. thing, like just a lot of that stuff, like he has the originals. Uh, and then he does uh, art gallery showcases uh, from time to time. So if you keep an eye on his feed, from time to time, you'll from you know time to time. you'll be able to keep keep a lookout for like the next time that like you can see that stuff in person. So I forgot usually a, up in the northwest area, but yeah, I forgot a big uh, video game art thing that I have uh, is vinyl records. I have a lot of mm. game soundtracks, and the art in those is incredible. Like the Mist one is really good. Uh, Symphony of the Night is really good. I recently got the Sea of Thieves like four vinyl set, and like the the records themselves have like a pop up ship on it, and it'll just go around in a circle awesome. or whatever. And the it comes with this big storybook that a character uh, from within the game tells you a story, and it like goes with each of the songs. So like if you're reading it as wow. you're listening to the albums, it like tells this narrative that's like, and the albums are the soundtrack to this. Like tall tales. That's so rad. It's pretty wild. <laughs> it's pretty sick. The art and vinyls is amazing. Oh, Hubert, get this. Hmm. Maybe this fits better on reaction shots, but I ordered today. I saw a vinyl for The Guest 2. And I was like, there's a The Guest 2? There's a Guest 2? And then I looked into it, and it apparently was an April Fool's thing, but it's an actual thing, and I ordered it. <laughs> It's a vinyl soundtrack to a fictional sequel to the movie <laughs> The Guest. <laughs> and I'm like, that's awesome. That's incredible. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. <laughs> oh my Wild. <gosh. laughs> From Guy Incognito. Howdy, allies. I'm taking a trip, and I packed my uh, go-to handheld, the PlayStation Portable. I knew they were going to say that. Uh, I'm going in there to update the music saved on it, uh, and I also checked out the custom themes I have saved on the PSP. Uh, this Those was were a, fun. This was an available feature, not something that came from having hacked firmware. Sony, Sony let you install themes on the PSP, and there were easy, accessible methods to create custom themes. I have uh, custom themes for my favorite games of that era, like Zone of the Enders 2, Front Mission 5, Final Fantasy Tactics, etc. Hell yeah. Uh, I loved having themes on my PlayStation consoles, uh, but there's a satisfaction in making and installing one you made yourself. So... What is your favorite dead console feature that will probably never come back? I imagine Street Pass. <laughs> I imagine custom themes is dead forever since platform holders want to control the UI so they can advertise to you through it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Whoa. Damiani Street Pass. Street Pass, like better come back for Switch Two, so then you can retroactively say this is an invalid answer. This is not dead. <laughs> Such a missed opportunity to not bring that. I understand why they didn't bring Meverse back. I understand some of the other stuff, but specifically, Street Pass. Why would you not do that? It's so weird. Yeah, it was so fun, especially like <laughs> catching people from like different states and all I of that. Agree, Dami, I agree, Dami. <laughs> Get those Street Pass bonds, dude. Big time bonds. Well, especially like when you would like be in an event and you would like. You would get like a, a me from somebody <laughs> recognizable or something. And it's yeah. Like, oh, freaking. Where were they? I mean, where are they? Just not that, but like, <laughs> you know, even being back at like the Game Trails office every day, seeing yeah. Kyle Bossman's stupid little me <laughs> and not give and giving him the not, not the like the thumbs up, giving him like the nope, nope. And him coming over, go, did you not give me like a yeah, whatever? I'm like, <laughs> I'll give you a yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. No yeah from me. <laughs> Street Pass is the prime example of like hitting the home run on the first try yeah. and then never being able to repeat it. Like they kept coming out with all of these other little games trying to like improve Street Pass or whatever. And it's just like, nah, man, find me. Yeah. That's it. We got it. Like every other thing was just, 
like, oh, this is cool. Like, do it for a little bit. But it's like, no, find me. Just I'll just keep running it back. I'll just keep running, find me back over and over. Yeah. Um, a couple actually on uh, PS5. I I just wish I could make custom folders. I really wish they added like a new. Oh, they haven't put folders on. Not like custom, custom. So on PS4, you could just make one on the home screen and mm-hmm. label it. So I would have like my queue and my backlog. Right. Very nice, very clean. Still can't do that for no reason. I don't understand what what is it, what is going on. Mm. Like we can we can play. God of War Ragnarok on this machine, but we can't make a custom folder. I don't get it. <laughs> uh, and then also a smaller one is um, patch notes. I really miss it. When you used to be able to click on a game and go down to like information or something or whatever, and it would be like version 1.02 or whatever and list like all the patch notes there. Now you just have to like go online and find right. it. But I love that because every time. You know, the Just game would update. Just to be able update. to see it right there, yeah. Oh, that the game's updating. What did they add? What are they doing? What's changed? Like, boom, right there. Yeah. I missed that. But it's, you know, it is giving some money to IGN, though, because now every every time that happens, they can put out their article. There you go. Like, what What did it change? Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, Isla, you have anything like that from the past that you would want back? My favorite missing feature uh, of PlayStation games is, or uh, consoles, is Castlevania. <laughs> uh, these are kind what of what happened to it, uh, dude. What happened? What, 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 like it's it's an anime, but like yeah. where's the game, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. Stop making video games. I mean, I hope that they do what they're doing with Silent Hill. A, I hope that these Silent Hill games are good, but I hope that they just take one of these people that are knocking down their door to make a you know, Castlevania game and just yeah. be like, okay, yacht club, go for it. It was you after know? they had to pay Kiefer Sutherland and Patrick Stewart. <laughs> and they were like, we're not doing this anymore. We'll see it we need 10 the, years from now. We need the Resident Evil 7 of Castlevania yeah. where it's like we see this trailer and it's like the slowest paced. You're some like just like entering a place to kill one vampire. <laughs> and then it's like, what is this cool vampire game? Oh, it's Castlevania. Oh. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> we need it. If if from, I mean everybody has said this, but if From Software made yep. a Castlevania game, I would lose my marbles. Yeah. Um, mine is like is technically separate things, but they're very similar. Uh, Xbox original Xbox and the PS3. Uh, you could uh play your your music and load your music onto them. So basically, I could put CDs. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that was cool. And like yes. save my CDs on there. And so yes. with the original Xbox, they had a thing where it, you could basically replace the soundtrack. Yeah. So like, uh, Burnout Three yep. in particular, like pretty offensive actually when you think about it. Yeah. No. Just like, no, nah, get did your that, soundtrack out of here. My, did that on my turn. <laughs> I would do that with Quake. Yeah, I would put in CDs. Uh, Street Fighter 4. Great music, but like after hearing like, the same track over and over in a game like that, it's like, yeah. all right, let, let, let me play some other stuff. And it was like, just sick. You just yeah, put it's in... Sick. It's, I mean, it was fun. Like, it, it, it evokes a little bit of the, the, the PC, mm-hmm. like, you know, MO of like letting users do what they want with their totally. game you know dude no, MMOs don't that. especially damiani i know like final fantasy 14 oh, hell yeah. wow has such good music but, like, everyone who streams to, them yeah yeah they never play the music yeah. in the game anymore yeah <laughs> uh and then similarly uh the the ps3 had like a whole thing with with playing music to where they had like videos and stuff that would would go like it was, Simple stuff like just like going over the earth or like other kinds of like visualizers and stuff, but it was like really nice and high end. And I would during that time, like I was hosting like a lot of parties and house concerts and stuff like that. And so what? like what? my PS3 would just be like the go to thing. It was like okay, I've just got like all my crazy eclectic music and like local bands and stuff, and like yeah. load it all in there and have that going, but also have it on the screen. So like. People could see like what winning. I was playing, or you know, but also just like have something visually there to stare at, you know, like screensaver yeah. style. Sick. Um, and yeah, it was just like really nice to be able to do that. It's very cool. Tell, tell us more about these parties. Hmm. Huh? Blood party. Blood parties, dude. Blood party. Blood party. Uh, Matt Blair and Megan Rue came came to some of those. Upside huh? down uh, the house concerts or what? Yeah. Are these kind of like the? Uh, <laughs> 
They kind of like the. Oh I understood that. <laughs> Trying to keep straight face. Uh, the blade blood rave parties, right? Blood. Rave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sprinkler blood sprinklers, dude. What does blood sprinklers? <laughs> it was, it was, it was, Don't do it like House of Usher, though. Ooh, it was scary. It was just Kool Aid, though. Yeah. Also, the scene for that. Um, I had a roommate who had a, a L.A. Anime Club. And so basically just like a bunch of people would, would come over and, and share anime and watch anime, especially because it was still it's before fun. like you could get it easily. Yeah, it's like mostly yeah, we were watching yeah. like fan subs. Um, but whenever he would do that oh. uh, in the foyer, I would set up uh, the GameCube with like the Naruto fighting games and like Bleach and like all of that stuff. Yeah. Was this the guy like did like he, did he keep doing it? Because I feel like. This is something you referred me to. That's something back at Game Trailers Blood. Like Maybe. you had a friend who did it. Yeah, a game, it was, you know, and he it, did it for they a did it in like years. Hollywood. Like there was a meeting place like in Hollywood. They eventually started doing it at, but then they couldn't have that space anymore. I remember. That I don't remember. I don't remember okay. meeting in Hollywood, but Okay. Yeah. Or somewhere yeah, like it's somewhere over, else it was like Kind of yeah. South Bay, like Torrance area, I think, or something like that. But oh no, then maybe it's not the same person. Nobody, uh, never mind. Nobody wants uh, PlayStation Home to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, Facebook wants it to come back. <laughs> I could see GTA Six or something letting letting you put your Spotify, like log into Spotify in the car or something, but then they would play like fake ads or something. They would like right. make There's fun of you somehow. There's a Spotify thing on PS Five, right? Yeah, you can Here's have a, you can play yeah. Spotify on PS5. Yep. You know what, Rockstar, if you're looking to make a gesture of good faith to everyone to ensure GTA 6 blows like records out of the water even further than it's going to do, uh, with all that money you've got, can you like secure all the licensing rights for, for your music for streaming song. on Twitch yep. so Ooh. that none of us will get in trouble? Every and song. you like imagine you would end up one of your trailers like, by the way, stream like this, like in a presentation, like stream all you want on Twitch. You will not get a copyright strike. Enjoy. <laughs> Send your thanks to us. I mean, Rockstar sends its regards. <laughs> it would be funny if the if the streaming mode, like if they obtain the rights for like the entire catalog of one artist. So it just turn, changes all the like radio stations to like nothing but Snoop Dogg or something like that. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Just all prints all they the time. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. They better Dude, sort be it out. Sick. From Mo Grant. Mo Grant. Mo. Yo, allies. Between Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and X-Men 97, I've been in 90s nostalgia heaven for the past few weeks. Uh, it's really incredible how both of these projects capture the feel and vibes of the original releases while changing and updating certain, certain aspects for the better, especially considering how different they both go about doing that, uh, with X-Men being more of a faithful continuation and Rebirth making much more bold choices. So my question is, what lessons do you think other remakes or continuations could learn from these two releases or any other recent high-quality remakes like RE4? What makes these faithful love letters to fans instead of pandering cash grabs? Are there any upcoming remakes or continuations that you specifically think need to pay close attention to these titles? As always, keep up the good work. Love and respect. So, yeah, what do you think is the secret sauce? And what I mean, are others, it's a case-to-case -case basis. What, what's coming up that should learn from this? I mean, Silent Hill 2 obviously comes to mind, Isla. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know? Pay attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very curious how that's going to go. Yeah. Yeah, it's a case-to-case -case basis because we've really, especially with Resident Evil, we've been straddling this line of, like, remake and reimagining. Yeah. You know? So. It's funny because, like, to me, the, the, the three that Mo mentioned are, like, the three schools mm -hmm. where it's, like, you know, Final Fantasy Rebirth is a complete, like, it's a requel, right? Like it's it's saying new things, it's changing it, it's the narrative continues and especially valuable if you have the nostalgia. X-Men 97 is such a direct continuation that I, I found myself like going through the wiki of the X-Men animated series and being like, what the fu what are they talking about? When did this happen? You know, <laughs> what happened to Morph here, you know? Yeah, I think um, they just like rewatched that whole thing oh, like yeah. a couple years ago, so it's a little bit to. more fresh, but Yeah. But like, and then the the Resident Evil are like somewhere in the in the middle of those where it's like, uh, mostly a remake, but the, you know they update it and change some stuff and like, 
I love I love all three of those approaches. Mm-hmm. The rebirth approach is so interesting because it's just like, I I think if you have something to say, do it that way. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then like, it's really interesting to just continue like X Men ninety seven too. I don't know. I lost what I was gonna say, but like, yeah, they're good. <laughs> no, I like what you were saying there. If you have something new and interesting to say, then you know, reimagine it in a more modern sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas like. Silent Hill 2 has said everything That's, it needs to say, so yeah. maybe for this one we try to be as faithful right. as possible. That's, yeah, like, <laughs> that's a, such a good point, Hubert, because, like, Silent Hill 2 was basically, like, perfect mm-hmm. besides, you know, some technical limitations and, like, period limitations, like, but the enhanced edition, of which I scre- uh, sing the praises all the time, yeah. you know, kind of addresses all of those things you know and like it's an older game but like that makes it so much better and like what what are what is an over-the-shoulder camera going to be bringing to the conversation if that's the only thing you're really doing you know and like obviously the game's not out yet and i have cautious hope <laughs> big time cautious <laughs> um, hope. but you know uh, but, but then, then the other the other part of that conversation though huber especially with like something like final fantasy or um silent hill 2 is like who has the authority yeah. to make changes and to say new things where it's like rebirth is in the hands, you know, of, of a lot the of the creators. same people. Yeah. And like, Great call. and like, yeah, that was one of my main 97 but, is at least like, yeah, you know, trying to, to be as authentic as it can be, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, but I mean, even there, aren't there some of the same people? Yeah. Right yeah. There's show? some people involved. Yeah. And like, if, if, if Bloober team was, was being like we're reimagining Silent Hill 2 like we're we're adding to the conversation I'd be like are you like <laughs> right. are you the guy like yeah. are you the one who should be doing that like yeah Ugh. no shade on Bloober team I'm just I oh it's like the best game so ever nervous. dude like <laughs> oh. like Metal Gear Solid 3 is even going to be weird too because it's like <laughs> yes. more oh, so yeah. than any game oh my God. ever oh, made in the history yes. of video games it is it really falls under one person. I know, like, video games are teams, and it is so annoying to be like, oh, this creator did this, and it's like, no, a thousand people did this game, actually. Yeah, totally. But, like, Metal Gear is so Kojima. Like, it is It is more tied... Like, that game is tied to him more than... Any right. game is tied to anyone, I feel like. So especially well, any kind of changes there are going to feel weird. Well, and especially with someone, like, a company that has since developed kind of a uh, uh, spotty reputation as yeah. Konami, you know? It's like, yeah. you, you're you definitely not the guy. Like, you're yeah. definitely not the one. Yeah. yeah, well, like, that's that's a question, too. It'd be interesting to see, like, how many of those people are, are left. Mm-hmm. How right. many people did Kojima take with him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so even if it's not him, like, how much of yeah. his team has he, has he got over there? Yeah. Yeah. I guess with, it's funny, too, because you look at... You look at older games, and then it's so fun when the developers and the creators talk about what they wish they could have done or things that didn't go right. And I feel like that's such a cool opportunity with a remake. Like I always think about, yeah. I always think about Kojima talking about the end boss fight in Metal Gear right. Solid Three and how mm. he wanted it to be like this twenty-four hour, <laughs> like, like actual, a week originally. Yeah, or something. Yeah. it's like grueling. Uh, uh, yeah, battle against the snipers. So it's like okay, wait. This the creator said they were limited on this boss fight. Let's try to actually go for that vision somehow. So I feel like that's that's fun when you have very often the limits are good though. Yeah, yeah <laughs> true. But it is fun when the creator says like, "Oh, we couldn't do this in the original." So for a remake, like, let's try to yeah. let's try to do that thing. Or it's like Dragon's Dogma too. Like obviously it's a, it's a sequel, but like. It basically is almost a remake because they're getting to make it the way that they wished they could have made it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Back in well, the day. yeah. That's what's, what's one of the things that's crazy with with the X Men show is it's like, you know, if you go back and rewatch that now and like with the perspective of Evan adult, <laughs> and like I'm not even sure if I saw all those episodes when I was a kid because like that was just not the way you watched TV. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's like if you caught it on Saturday morning, you, you it, did. Yep. It was aired out of order, which was yeah. a, a huge thing on Disney Plus for a while. Like you had to like have a guide to like figure out which ones to watch mm-hmm. in which order, um, and which is crazy because like half of the seasons are like part one, part two, part three. <laughs> exactly. Like there's yeah. like three huge four part arcs in like every season. Um, and but if, yeah, if you 
go back and you watch that that original series now, and it's like, oh yeah, they just got completely screwed over at the end. Like this, this that got rushed out. It doesn't look right. It's all like wacky plot points, and now they're, but they're picking it up and they're just yes ending it, and we're like, all right, that stuff happened, uh, but we're gonna. We're gonna see what happens next. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's what's so nuts about '97 is is like you remember some of the stuff that that happened in the later seasons, and you're like, "We're still going with that." All right, okay, cool. <laughs> Why not? Uh, any thoughts, Damiani? Mm, yeah, we're we're good. <laughs> we're good stuff. <laughs> nice. All right, it's time for bats. Uh, as you mentioned, Children of the Sun is out next week. Maybe I mentioned. I don't know if I mentioned. That could have been the thinking of last week. Anyways, Children of the Sun is out next week, April 9th. Uh, that is the game where it's a sniper puzzle game. Might as well be Children of the Sun. Shoot one bullet and have to take out more, multiple targets with it with all kinds of crazy psychic powers and all that. In the launch trailer, how many times will we see a bullet connect with a target? Uh, so, same bullet hits multiple targets, that's fine. I just want to know how many targets get hit by that bullet. Uh, and, uh, that gameplay trailer that came out, uh, this week was 1 minute and 23 seconds long, with 13 targets being hit. Huber. You go first. Stealthy center. No, you I go first. Yeah, you're first. I'm doing something. <laughs> yeah. uh, Blood Wars goes first. Nine. Uno reverse. Effervescent Nine. Oh, come on, Blood. Nine. Huber. Stealthy Centipede. 11. 11. Damiani, the pompous Cocker Spaniel. 21. Blackjack, Whoa. baby. Isla, One, Wet I said 13 again. Same Z's. Nice. Always a, a fair strategy. I'm boxed in. Uh, Don says 7. Don, Fashionable Vanity, says 7. Gabby, Optimistic Rat. 14. 14. Damn it. So boxed. Damn mm. it. I need a bullseye for this one. So boxed in. <laughs> All right, last week's bet was about that IGN first reveal for Eternal Strands. Of oh, uh, the spotless mind. <laughs> spotless <laughs> mind. Uh, I checked uh, everything that they put up on IGN that first day, April 2nd, just the first day, remember. Um, we said anything goes, anything that was in the video. Anything goes. Uh, interviews, et cetera, so et cetera, good. et cetera. At, I was looking for the word Adventure to see how many times the word adventure would be up in that IGN content. Um, and we'd known in advance that it was a fantasy action adventure game, so we knew it would at least be in there for, for that if they yeah. just used the boilerplate description for the genre. Huber, mm. you said we would get six adventures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Damiani said seven. Isla said 32. Out of my mind. Out of your mind. Don was out. He, he missed the bet, unfortunately. Uh, Gabby said 15, and I said 4. 4 is And the answer... Is 4. Was 4. Oh my god. Uh, there was 3 in the article, and then there was 1 on the trailer page. Have you, have you mapped the wave function in the universe, Blood? Can you see <laughs> forward and backward through time with perfect clarity? Is that what's happening? <laughs> no, I cannot. Okay. Uh, that brings our scores, uh, to Stealthy Centipede 6. And effervescent hippopotamus for Let me tell you about patreon.com slash easy allies. Uh, everything that you see us do here at Easy Allies uh, is because our wonderful audience uh, pitches in and helps to make it happen. Uh, and so if you enjoy watching this podcast each and every week, uh, please consider uh, throwing in five bucks a month uh, to make those four to five episodes happen. Uh, so if you think this is worth five bucks, go over there to Patreon and do that. Uh, there's also a one-time donation link in the uh, video description or below the player on Twitch. Uh, but Patreon is the most effective way to support us. Uh, at five dollars, uh, you get this podcast two days early. You get it ad-free and you get two bonus love and respect questions. Uh, you also get to submit to Love and Respect. So uh, if you haven't been using that uh, or if you become a new patron, uh, please consider hopping in there. Usually Mondays, I throw that Love and Respect post up. Put your comment in there for your question. Uh, the more the merrier, always. 
Uh, and as we said, you get in that Discord, so you get to vote on those top tens. So you'll be able to nominate uh, those supers, those fighting game supers coming up uh, in that next top ten. Uh, and then uh, $25 and up, we've got our producer tiers. Uh, we've got uh, $50 at fan mail. At $100, you get Brandon to read something for you, do a little VO on the side there for you. Uh, and then our platinum producers get a shout out on this podcast each and every week. And this month's shout outs go to Javawebs, El Thanis, Raymond Wheeler III, and Forever Ender. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. All right. Uh, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, but we just had our eight-year anniversary celebration. Uh, so uh, if you weren't around Tuesday for that, it was a good time. Uh, we played some Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, we played Outlast Trials with Jones. We did. Get Jones Hell into yeah. the madness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I beat the final trial today before I came to work. Oh, I'm so nice, excited. Nice. Sick. Took me so many tries. Uh, we started Alone in the Dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we did our community showcase and uh, Hall of Greats there, too. Uh, so if you go to uh, Easy Allies Plays or EasyAllies.com, you can find the playlist to check all of that out. The VODs are up on Twitch, too. If you want to uh, hang out with uh, the chat from the past, you can do that. Uh, chat from the past. The, the update, uh, we raised uh, $4,096 there uh, nice. to, to cover some expenses, including our lovely Robamiani 2.0 over Ooh. here. <laughs> Straight out of Star Trek. Uh, I had fun <laughs> with that. Yes. Yeah, they were they were, were tweaking it to the last yeah, minute. Yeah, Gabby tonight. had the idea to put some uh, uh, Gundam decals on there, which is a good touch. Yeah. Nobs. I, I have a few things I want to change. There's some stuff that I don't love, but yeah, Robamiani is coming along. Nice. It's alive. No, he's glitching out. Oh, no. Uh, but along with that, uh, we're also going to be able to cover the cost for Damiani to come out here for Summer Game Fest. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for that. Thank you, everybody. Get Damiani <laughs> back you. on this desk. <laughs> do some reactions, play some games, all that good play stuff. Play Silk Song, dude, those opening minutes when it shadow drops. Mm, dude. Yeah, where, is that, where is that on also this week? All the Silk Song hints this week. Yeah. Triple I Game is next week, dropping. Damiani. Okay. Next week. Triple I. Next week. Darkest Thanks, Dungeon 2, baby. <laughs> Confirmed. Okay. Uh, Damiani, you also uh, did a solo queue that's been talk of the town, pretty popular over there with uh, Huber and uh, Tiffany Lockhart. Talk yeah, of the town. I like that. Huber's, uh, yeah, Blood's saying talk of the town, man. <laughs> Should name this show that. Talk of the town. That's a good title. There you go. Talk of the town. Good one. I want um, Blood yeah. to start a blood party show. <laughs> that becomes the talk of the town. Yeah. <laughs> and then everyone talks about the blood parties. Like, that's the water <laughs> yeah, cooler like, talk. Huh? Every Monday is like, oh, my God. Blood's party this weekend was so wild. Oh, my God. I want to hear that. I want to see some, a TikTok video of someone saying, Blood's party was so wild this weekend. Please. If it didn't really happen, please make that. Uh, but about that episode. Yeah, sorry. I cut tell, you off. Tell us about that, uh, that solo cue. Yeah, I finally was able to get uh, Huber and uh, Tiffany Lockhart, our special guest, on together to talk about uh, what they want to see from the next Resident Evil, from Resident Evil 9, and what they wanted the mm. next remake to be. And uh, I felt like someone in the comments put it the best way. It's like, it's like, da- uh, Dad, <laughs> Damiani looks like a proud father watching <laughs> the two kids. Like, yeah, I was like, yep. <laughs> and that was, yeah, it that was, was so it was. Some really good stuff, so I was very happy to do that. Super fun. Nice. Uh, Since I won that bet, uh, I get to shout out anything and anyone that's on my mind this week. Hey, Blood, good win. Thank you. You got me. You got me on that. You undercut me there. It was good. It was good. Uh, I got the final word, and I get to sign off with my trademark sign off. Um... This whole show is a shout out. So (laughs) everything I put on here is something me shouting out something. Uh, I'll shout out Huber. Uh, he's been pulling some double duty over there with MinMax, doing Min the Max. trivia tower, doing some podcasts and yeah. stuff, filling in over there. Yeah. Some fun times. So much fun. Yeah. Had Roger's base there before. And yeah. then when is your next MinMax so, uh, episode thing? Trivia tower is done for a bit, and they've done some podcasts. I should be on a podcast probably within a, a week or two, probably the, coming up. 
Nice. So, nice. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. Yep. Uh, final word. Um, I'm I'm optimistic for uh, the eternal strands. Um, I I I like uh, Shadow of Colossus. I like doing that kind of gameplay and uh, taking down a big crazy things. Uh, so we will see how it goes. We will see what else IGN's got to say about it. But I am I'm looking forward to that game and hope that it can live up to all that potential and that new team self publishing. That thing as well. Yeah. All the respect for that. Uh, and we will see you before the next Blood Moon Rises. Brandon Jones? Nope.